this week on the program. Get ready to kill a bear with your own two hands, because on this episode, we're talking the edge. I'm Andrew Jupin. Well, I'll make it do what that it can do. Steven Sadak. Hey, Eric Siska. Chris the Bear. Bob. <laughs> Say your name. <laughs> Brett. And we hate movies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in, as always. Uh, that's right. You heard up front. We have a special guest with us this week. A uh, friend of the show, Brent McDuff, is here. Author, all-around gadabout, uh, socialite and whatnot. But you are here, and it's 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 programmatic uh, synchronization, we'll call it here on We Hate Movies. You got a rad new book uh, coming out or out, depending upon with, when this episode airs. Uh, but, Brent, tell us a little bit about why... You're here talking about this rad book, and we're talking about Lee Tamahori's The Edge. Yes, his rad film. <laughs> oh, it's rad, baby. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, edge-wise, I'm just a huge <laughs> fan of The Edge. You're just a fan of edging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. together. All forms. <laughs> the cutting all, edge. All forms of edging, of bear, all forms of bears, edging. however you wish to define it. Sure. Um, so just a big fan right out of the gate. Uh, it's America's um, pastime is edging. It is, it is. Edging two bears, being edged by a bear. Yeah, yeah. got to hold on to that feeling. Edging, baseball, what, yes. what else? Uh, or burgers. Pie we're, eating we're contests. Yes. Yeah, yeah, generally, yeah. Let's move some books. So wh why are you here, Brad? Okay, so I just wrote a book. It is about wildlife economics, and it's all centered around hunting. So what the I- The Shotgun Conservationist. Yes, say. The, the title, title of, the of the book is The Shotgun Conservationist, Why Environmentalists Should Love Hunting. So I wanted to piss people off immediately. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and, uh, you know, that's how you really get sales, is people are like, ugh, I do not want to read that book. And then they buy it immediately. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to buy it before you can burn it. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yep. Outrage culture, that's what we're <laughs> tapping into. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that was my strategy. <laughs> um, but because the book covers all kinds of topics as they relate back to hunting, I did want to have a section about media. So, the, and my favorite is movies, movies. So I love movies. So there's a huge, there was initially a massive section on movies. And I kept sending it into my editor and she kept whittling it down <laughs> and whittling it down. <laughs> and so initially... I had, well, you guys know that um, I, I asked the boys if I could interview them and I got a big We Hate Movies interview for the book. Mm -hmm. And know. it was like two pages. I sent, mm -hmm. them, I sent them homework. They had to like <laughs> read an essay. Uh -huh. And then, um, and then I, I questioned them for the homework. And I had this huge two-page interview and I sent it in. And it came back a little shorter, a little shorter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. a little shorter. Story of our lives. And this is actually exactly how the Wall Street Journal yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had a giant interview with the Wall Street Journal, and then it became one sentence. Anyway, go ahead. The Sorry. We Hate Movies guy said yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> to an interview, we'll tell you nothing about. The, anyway. This is, uh, well, if you, if you read the segment, that is exactly what happened to your interview in my book. And all I can, all I can imagine is my editor coming back and being like, well, you know, they, they, they talk a lot about cinema and movie making. It's a little mm -hmm. bit less about hunting. It's more about <laughs> film theory. And I kept being like, yeah, but what about this other part? Can't we keep... <laughs> and so I kept fighting and fighting for it. And all I can think is she's going home being like, he wants his little friends yeah, in sure. the book. Yeah. But give him a sentence so I can get him <laughs> off my back or something. Brant, I'm telling you, what you should have done is you should have pitched him this way. Say, we are hunting movies in the wild mm. is what we are doing here on this show. <laughs> is we, 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 
You know, we're, we're using all kinds of traps and, and guns. Right, right. We're we all kinds of stuff. You have to find out where to rent this movie. I exactly. mean, that's a hunting. Yes. There's all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. You got to go out there. Interpretation. Yeah. So basically, I wanted to ask the guys about hunting in film. And it got whittled down to a maybe two sentences great and a sentences. mention of Steve but, only. But yes, which is great because uh, uh, I've known you the longest. That, that's the most right. important part. Uh, but really quickly, what is like the 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 elevator pitch for the book as a whole in terms of, you know, like, I'm an environmentalist. Why should I give a shit about hunting? My question. Sure. Um, it's not asking people to like hunting or become hunters. Basically, the point is uh, rethink it or lay off it because it actually does have these huge paybacks into the wildlife conservation economy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is just because of habitat preservation. So even if when you get to the section where I talk about Africa, big game trophy hunting is actually really, really good for habitat conservation in Africa. Otherwise, those wild lands get converted to uh, crop farming, animal grazing, some kind of development, mining. So you have to make habitat good for animals and it has to pay for so it. So how much so. ivory can I take out of it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That's I'm Well, not. you know, read the book, pick up the book if you guys want to make some money. <laughs> well, I think it's actually kind of funny that your, your editor, not trash as a person at all. No, no, I don't she's, know anything she's about anything. fantastic. But I think what's, what's interesting is that part of what you get into in the part that, you know, we're mentioning a little bit and just talking about like media representation and whatnot you would think, you know, one of those ways to sort of get the message out, you know, that you're talking about in the book and, you know, other people have the same idea is through like major media outlets, yep. right? So it's, it's kind of interesting, like if you can change, you know, like one of the biggest examples in, in the book in that part is talking about Bambi, right? Yeah. And just how that moment in movies sort of changed a country's entire perception on like what hunting, you know, is or is not, right? So you'd think that like, through the studying of media and discussing it, maybe we can sort of turn that a little bit uh, to better representations of like hunting in in media, which I don't think we have a ton of. Oh at the well, moment. as soon as as soon as Holly Weird can get <laughs> on board, <laughs> that's right. Sure. Well, it's all like movies. Like, have you, Brant? You you talked about Trophy. Have you seen the documentary Trophy? Yes. Yeah, I thought that was a really striking movie where they actually talk about how like hard how hard a question that thing is mm -hmm. like it didn't just try to give you an easy way this way or that way about it but like otherwise it's all like these like romantic indies where like William Willem Dafoe is being paid like five hundred thousand oh. dollars to hunt a panther sure. yeah. like and, and it's a 90 minute movie of him just looking on a gun and then putting it down and then looking through a gun right and the, it down the and last ti fire. Tasmanian tiger yes that yes <laughs> yeah. that one god yeah, yeah, man because yeah, yeah. yeah. there's there's a bunch of movie, like, movies like that that just come out and I feel like all of them star Willem Dafoe. <laughs> yes. I, I'm, not, I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm going I, hunting again. <laughs> Dafoe. Ooh. But I don't think he's ever done a most dangerous game thing. And this movie almost, this movie The Edge almost becomes oh, the most dangerous game. We should, be, we should be hunting humans for sport. But Brent, where do you stand on that? That's, well, that's my next book. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I, I assume you've already watched Hard Target in preparation mm -hmm. to get the foundation. Oh, Hard Target? No, oh, no, I'm a, a uh, what was the, um, what was the, uh, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Surviving the Game? Yes. yes. So, oh, Surviving oh, the Game. Yes. It's right. pretty yeah. much Surviving the Game, but okay. Jean-Claude Van Damme is in Hard Target. Ooh, which is and John so, Woo directed it. It's a bit of an upgrade. Yeah, I mean, for your next book, I mean, yes, I mean how much methane does a human being make, really, Eric? <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh so many. And there's so 8 much. billion of them. <laughs> yeah. There's, listen, there's too many fucking mm -hmm. people. And that yeah. that's the title of the next book. There's <laughs> yep. too many fucking people. Yep. Brent McDuff tells you how to change the world. Yeah, I think I that's mean, what the next exactly. We could just have a conservation <laughs> thing with people. You get a nice, like, you put me in a habitat. You can <laughs> hunt me once oh, a year. Oh, look at the mighty Cisco. Right, you can try to kill me, but otherwise I'm living pretty nice. <laughs> no, I like uh -huh. this. Why think, not? It's better than buying a human at the store that you get from a factory farm. <laughs> that, that sounds <laughs> like the time machine. The What was the the Aloy and the Morlocks? The Morlocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Morlocks. Yeah, I definitely. can see you really thriving in that kind of situation, Eric. Because I've got the you would collection get... of a Morlock. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, totally. Not the same in the muscle mass situation. <laughs> yeah, definitely less of that. If you knew you were going to get hunted once a year, Year, you would spend that year getting ready, really ready for Honestly, it. Honestly, I think I'd be fucking happy. Yeah, you, that, I think you would really thrive in that situation. Come and get me, motherfuckers! Uh, so, all right. So, 
to kind of like maybe mm-hmm. swoop into the movie a little sure. bit sure. here. Something that has nothing to do with the topic of hunting or conservation at all, but something that I found totally wild <laughs> uh, was seeing that there's a movie like this that opens with the big deal 20th Century Fox logo because this is 97 this yeah. movie's coming out. It's before big studios started making art shingles. Oh, like, yeah. this is 100% a fucking yes. Fox Searchlight or a 100%. Paramount Vantage yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. a Warner's Independent kind of movie. But because, like, the business had not shifted to that yet, you have all these gigundo movie stars in a movie that's really just two of them and then Harold Perrineau and, of course, Bart the Bear uh, that would definitely be under a smaller arm. But this... you. All this to say, you do not expect this movie to start with brum, bum, <laughs> yeah. brum, bum, brum, and the fucking load, the oh, fanfare. Star, Star you know? Wars is starting. I saw that. I saw this movie in theaters. I no, did else. you really? Oh, absolutely. I think no, I might Steven. have too. Actually. It was really. Late, it was yeah. the late nineties, and I was going to the movie. Oh, oh yeah, dude. everybody. Uh-huh. I had please. nothing else going on, and it was like. It was specifically like man movies or like cool man bow, movies. Bow, 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 man. Exactly. David Manet. David Manet. Uh, <laughs> no, I think I was like, oh, cool. Alec Baldwin and Hannibal Lecter fighting the bear. And I was right. That's the bigger <laughs> thing. That's <laughs> the thing that comes with this movie is that Anthony Hopkins at the time was a genre. Yeah. He, yeah, yep, exactly. he, his, he was still riding the, the Silence of the Lamb train, yep. I think. Throughout this whole, because does anybody remember that awful instinct? Yes. yes. Oh my yes. sweet yes. Jesus! And they allowed a, that to be released by a major studio, <laughs> and he played a bear in that. Right? He was. Yeah. He, he was, was like a wild a, man. Yeah, he was a trapped animal in a cable. Goody Junior, I think, I is the doctor. So. Yes, yes, so, yeah, I, I think so. Eric, you've seen this in theaters. Brant, did you see this in theaters? No, uh, I did not. I had the VHS, and uh, when when we talked about doing this movie, yeah. I, I mean, I said. I don't even need to rewatch it. But I, I <laughs> do, but I do, I watched it again on on my same VHS that yeah. I had when I was a kid. Well, this so, is exciting. Wow. You're going to critique it for us and you're going to tell us how to kill the bear better, right? Yeah. Like how, what they should have done. Oh, wait till we get there. I have got so much to say about that. <laughs> uh, we should say that this movie, yes, indeed, written by David Mamet, which you don't expect to happen. And then uh, something that happens a little more, but you don't expect it so much nowadays. Directed by Lee Tamahori, who did... Uh, once We Were Warriors, a great fucking movie. Uh, but then Mulholland Falls, which is... Mm-hmm. Uh, Along Came a Spider, stay tuned. Mm-hmm. Die Another Day, already did an episode oh, on. Triple uh, X, State of the Union, stay oh, tuned. Oh, boy. And Second a one. hardcore stay tuned, a movie in where Nicolas Cage plays a magician. Oh. Next. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next gets uh, requested all the time. And we it's will yeah. not very that. good. No, no, it's no, no. It's not in theaters. Uh, this not is one, this, of his, one of his better movies, yes. perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, but the vast majority of this fella's fucking filmography either is an episode, will be an episode, or is being turned to an episode right, right. now. Right. Thank okay. you for your service. The, the, <laughs> what, the, what movies, what, the, what separates this movie, and I think is why it's one of those better ones, I think the setting is so great. I think, like, honestly, like, I love all the wildlife photography. Yes. In this movie. It looks, oh, yeah. It does look really gorgeous. Like, it, it holds up in that old 90s. It's definitely on film, obviously. It's pretty digital and all totally. that Totally. And then we have, there's a lot of what I've just been calling Lord of the Rings walking in this uh-huh. movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. We are stepping out in the fucking Shire in this movie, man. Walking, and it looks beautiful. It's Alaska, just... that's like America's Shire. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Is that where this is supposed y- to be? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, I missed that. This was filmed like entirely in Canada. Canada. Uh, <laughs> Canada. It looks beautiful. Canada. I mean, I'll, I'll give him that. I mean, it, it Canada, Alaska. We're gonna split hairs <laughs> here. Yeah. Same diff. Uh, so yeah, so Anthony Hopkins plays this billionaire dipshit who's like, <sighs> I guess you got to pay your friends to come out for your big old man birthday party in the no, middle of nowhere. Not even your friends. Your your wife's photographer. Your wife's <laughs> friends. No, no. Yeah. I think he's tagging along. Yes, he's, he's, he's oh, he's yes. Oh. It just so happens to be his birthday. Yes. That's, he's just like, oh, that's you're going, weird. You're going to be in Alaska. I'm sure you're not going to get fucked in Alaska, so I'll be going as well. I think that's kind of what's that, going on. Oh, I see. I see. And oh, sure. By the way, great David Mamet writing here. He gets so the opening <laughs> shot is like, you know, we're seeing this, like, on this little, <laughs> this little uh, wildlife area that they're going to be staying, this lodge. We're really establishing it. They get off the plane and he gets on the tarmac and this. <laughs> This like uh, this uh, grease monkey working the other oh, planes is yep. like, man, would I love to get a piece of that lady? And he's like, what lady? And it's like that plane lady, uh, the yeah. challenger there. It's uh, just yeah. it's <laughs> too much. He says he says it's a twenty million dollar aircraft, and I'm like, you know what? If you really give a shit about planes, you're saying. 
oh, it's got twin Rolls Royce yeah. engines yeah. or something. You're not yeah. saying it's twenty million dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that you guy know, was crying not. for different reasons on 9 11. <laughs> But, <laughs> but the best planes. part is he goes, some other guy's like, oh, Charles, uh, this is for you. This is whatever his name is, Charles Mill. Morse. Morse, uh, Mr. Morse. There you go, Charles Morse. And he's like, Charles Morse, the billionaire? Yep. Yeah. That's who you are? Yes. Which is my favorite line. But this is, it's, I mean, it's so funny because like, why would this fucking grease monkey give a shit? But to your point about him, uh, uh, Hopkins coming off of Lecter, he kind of has a little bit of a Lecter hiss right here because the dude is like, Oh, yeah, like the, the billionaire. Is that who you are? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh. He doesn't believe that. He, he still, even though this happened, and even though it's the strangest thing, that he does not believe that he was talking about the plane. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. still suspicious well, after it. It's so funny that, like, so much of this movie hinges on him being su suspicious of people wanting to fuck his wife. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, he's right, Hopkins, I guess. And, and he, your wife is Elle McPherson. Right. Yes. You know. Which There's is also, a little bit of a suspicion there. Yeah. And he's right. Well, what to are be we suspicious. doing? You, you're marrying her. Yeah. You know, you know the not, deal. Yeah. Exactly. Also, you're just a fucking bag of wrinkles with money. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, let her have her fun. Jesus Christ. Right? I mean, he doesn't want to admit it, man. He doesn't want to admit it. You can have your fun too. Here's you the can... thing is that the problem with having David Mamet do that is that this guy is supposed to be like a world titan. He's supposed to be able to like walk. He, I think he owns a bank, he says at some point. Mm. And like he is supposed to be walking into all these rooms and just having people like swarm him and like, oh my God, this man is just too much. You want to S that D, dude. And right. then, you know. And what we actually get from him, let the, the show of charm is like, hey, did you know that you can make a carburetor out of that taffy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I inherited all this money. Uh, did you know you could make uh, celery sticks out of carrot sticks? <laughs> <laughs> did you know that? Fire from ice, <laughs> yes, Mr. Baldwin. Is, Ask me how you do that. Constantly, Thomas. like little, fa like it's like an old man who went on Wikipedia yep. and just yeah. won't stop talking about what he read about. And, and I love printing out the internet. The original <laughs> title of this movie was The Bookworm. Of and then, course. like, right oh after God. it was done, they were like, we need a better title for anyone to go see of this. Of course. Movie. I'm a bookworm. I read books. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, even Bear Attack. It's <laughs> terrible, but closer to the movie. Now, Brant, can you use an ice cube? to make fire through the lens <laughs> of the sun or whatever the fuck his explanation You know, was. that one, I, I... Haven't done it yet? I, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to comment on it, uh, but I have never done it. Mm. Got it. Well, soon we will drop you into the wild and we'll be seeing how yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. It's a kind of like wild boys. Yeah. Oh my God, that'd be great. <laughs> great arm for the show. Uh, they we sort of set more up... exploration. What's yeah. that? We should do more exploration like oh, that. Oh yeah, challenges people want us of, looking into things. Yeah, some challenges of feet. Outside podcasting. Oh, outdoor podcast. <laughs> outdoor podcast. I like this idea. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds kind of not as impressive as you think it may. <laughs> we just pull a generator out into the middle of the yeah. woods and be like, oh, we're just going to talk. It's actually going to be pretty quiet. we took a battery quiet. powered fucking I guess, Well, there you go. The That'll right? work. And then you yeah, can yeah. all hear the wind that's making it unlistenable. <laughs> <laughs> that's the benefit. It sounds like shit. Fantastic <laughs> ambiance. So he's got something about like, uh, yeah, we're going to do whatever we're going to do. And then... Uh, We'll be back in New York at 8 p.m., yes. I think Baldwin says, because we got to we gotta turn over some pictures I got to take. This is crazy. They're coming fr from New York City <laughs> to, like, you know, outside of Anchorage mm -hmm. and going back in 24 hours? That's a that's miserable, that's a miserable that, no, two that's not, days. That's not even possible. It's like <laughs> 10 hours to get there at least. Yeah. Like, but, not even for all the point. cocaine in the world. <laughs> Only by gunpoint would you get me on this plan for this, this But I guess he's situation. so... I mean, and that's the thing. They don't actually... Uh, there's like two scenes with Elle McPherson and Anthony Hopkins and they're not very good because too, too many. Half of them uh, feature Elle McPherson. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. But, uh, who by the way, same year, Batman and Robin, this is her big, am I an actress year and the oh, world sure. said no. Who no, was she no, in Batman you. and Robin? She was his girlfriend. girlfriend. She was Batman's girlfriend who's like, stop yeah. being Batman. He's like, Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> what if I, what if I just keep doing Batman? Yeah, how about that? How about if I keep doing the Batman thing? Batman's girlfriend's a good gig if you. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's a hard gig if you can get it. It's honestly, a temp gig. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you're not even getting health insurance. Well, that's you want to be the flirt. You want to be a Chase Meridian, really, mm -hmm. because oh. you, you're, you're keeping Chasing him as an Meridian. option, yeah. and you're not like fully letting in. Even though by the end, of course, they ruin her, and she's like obsessed with him. You're oh, a, thank you. You're a beautiful woman, but I'm going to hang out with this other leather clad, uh, rubber clad young man, and we're gonna <laughs> clean up the streets, young lady. I, I have to talk to Two Face, not you, uh -huh. you beautiful woman. <laughs> uh, so you know, whatever. We're out of this like gorgeous lodge. I mean, this is a primo piece of if you have to like spend 
less than 10 hours in Alaska. I guess you want to do it in this huge place. And, you know, we're going along. And Baldwin, I think it is, he's the guy who spots the photograph yes. of the indigenous fella. And, this, and it's what's his face? L- who's LQ Jones. LQ Jones, the, yes. The director of A Boy and His Dog. Oh, an wow. Absolutely astounding really? motion picture. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that is a mistake. Uh, and he just recently passed uh, oh. R.I.P. Farina. He was uh, totally Farina. R.I.P. Great, great, great actor. Time. Fantastic uh, presence. Uh, it's very important to note that around here is when Anthony Hopkins also uh, notices Alec Baldwin's watch. And uh-huh. we make oh, this yeah. big deal about like, there's two time zones. So that when I'm in L.A., I don't have to add three. Isn't that fucking <laughs> funny? Aren't I charming in this movie? He's supposed to be like a New Yorker, like a New York society type. He's a coke and fashion yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's got a friend's haircut in this movie, which is really something. Like a bear like, and an Yeah, oh yeah. Like a, yeah. He had this, the upward swoop, which was the style at the time. This is kind of like, and I don't have the timeline specifically. This, because it's coming out in 97, feels like we are towards the end of this look of Alec Baldwin. Yeah, yeah. Because we still have the narrow face. It's, it's pretty fat. Yeah. It's it's not <laughs> long. Okay, so it's pre-fat. Well, I'm trying to I be mean, nice about it, but Steve he, goes right to pre-fat. Pre-fat. <laughs> I mean, he sort of had the upward swoop even in 30 Rock, kind of. Yes. Yeah. A little bit. It's, yeah. It's longer and combed down. This is a little bit more of an upspike. Mm. Yeah, I, I think the Elaine Bennis right here. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I think the fat is a misnomer. He got thick. Yes. That's he Dude. thickened. His yes. whole body yeah. thickened. God, you yes. love a nice <laughs> th- <laughs> That's what happened. He just like it just like it got and it got tighter. Like he got muscled. But it's it just like everywhere at the same time. Like yeah, he was yeah. just like like you look at him and like you know uh, Beetlejuice is skinny as a rail. Beetlejuice right. or like married to the mob or whatever. Yeah. Blue uh blue what the fuck Miami is Blues. Miami, Miami Blues. Yes. Yeah. Like those movies he's all just like a very much smaller, but there's yeah. less of a person there. Yes. And like what he became later is a combo of like doughiness, but also like built like a brick shit house out of nowhere. Well, the, the Daniel Baldwin gene took effect and it just sort of started <laughs> taking, taking. Now time. you're as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I think it's either this year or I think it's next year. Actually, he does. He's the, uh, the hot uh, boyfriend in Notting Hill. Oh, that she's yeah. leaving for oh, Hugh Jesus Grant. Christ, I think that's yeah. the last call for him as like hot guy. <laughs> yes, I mean he, uh, people still find him attractive. Shit, yes, yeah, they, they do. do. Mm-hmm. No, it's, just, <laughs> it's just a different dude. That's all. Yeah, it's just a different, thicker. We all non Beetlejuice dude. We all get thicker. <laughs> and let's. <laughs> that's it's right. it's mostly muscle, <laughs> as everyone okay. will tell. Don't touch me, but it is. Should point out because my notes pointed it out around here, which means the on-screen credit came up. Uh, score by Jerry Goldsmith, which I said recently, he is my fave uh, film composer. Mm-hmm. And this rules. Yeah, I was not aware that he had done the music for this movie. I saw this like once or twice before. Mm-hmm. The first time was seriously like VHS back in college days or maybe high school. This is a rocking fucking score for this movie. It's uh, like, and you could have a thing where it's, um, you have like a small-ish kind of movie like this and the score's way too big for what it is. Yeah. But this score feels big, but isn't too big for the movie. It does Primo score. Yeah. It, it goes into, it knows how to handle some quieter scenes because a lot of this is, as we said, it's just like men walking around in the wilderness. Right. There's like, this long, like, dolly in of that, like, Alec Baldwin and Anthony Hopkins just, like, holding each other for what feels like two or three yeah. minutes uh, after something big that we will get to. Oh, yes. The, the pullout yeah. shot. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. There's yeah, yeah, a cool yeah. shot. The, yeah. So, like, basically, like, everyone's like, yeah, he, um, whatever this guy, Lee Q. L- LQ Lee, Jones. LQ he Jones. tries to, like, sell him on a oh, real no, that's, estate that's the next. Yeah, we're not, oh, that's yeah. the next day, yeah. which is an amazing... <laughs> Way too soon, but like he's like Oof, it's the paddle. Yeah, he uh, impresses him with oh, his whole paddle yeah. knowledge. He's like Christ. First of all, I the I had a real problem with this lodge keeper. <laughs> he, and, and now you're gonna hear about it. Okay. Um he's way too like down home country. Yes. And like that is not Alaska. No. You need like grizzled Alaskan. Right. Not like, you know, he has that like like a duck on a June <laughs> Yeah. And it's like that is not it. My no, dude. Yeah. People, he's, he's people totally in Alaska are wrong. like, the fuck is a June bug? What are you talking <laughs> you can about? You smell the lower 48 all over this guy. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you can go back to the... No, but uh, yeah, the yeah. whole thing is just sort of like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's... Uh, you know, Al McPherson's like, oh, Charles knows everything. And he's like, oh, really? Does he ever know everything? <laughs> I fancy myself a book, Wentworth. <laughs> <laughs> 
You might title this story after me, bookworm. I'm a worm, you see, a bookworm. <laughs> I worm through books. I like to dig through them like an apple. <laughs> you know, you come in here with your cheap cologne and your scarred face. <laughs> oh, looks like you got in a fight with a bear or something in your cheap shoes. <laughs> what, I will say, what I think I, what is interesting about the L.Q. Jones performance to me, at least, is that he does seem like someone, like, when the, uh, uh, the real estate thing does happen, it does kind of reveal that, like, that, the, the still, because he feels like he is putting on, like, a, a tough guy bravado yeah. for, like, Alec Baldwin and Harold Perrineau. Yeah, right. They both feel like they're, like, oh, my God, this guy is, like, masculinity personified yeah. and everything. But as soon as money touches him, uh-huh. he com- crumbles. Like, it's yeah. just a facade. Like, right. once he thinks there's a, an opportunity there, uh, it, it becomes this, like, I, I, uh, just please, could you give me money? Please, mm-hmm. could yeah. you just give me money? Uh, yeah, sorry, I need go to go back to this. I'm going to be your most pedantic. <laughs> Love yes. it. Oh, please. please. It, it, when he's uh, talking about the paddle and yeah. he's trying to, uh, he's like, now what's on the other side of this paddle? <laughs> and he's like, uh, you know, there's like the black panther on one side and the rabbit smoking the pipe. And, and then he says it's an old Cree Indian thing. Yeah. It's like there is no <laughs> North American Indian tribe that would have accidentally come upon a black panther. <laughs> sure. We are talking about like the Cree Indians live in Canada yeah. and panthers, which are just like melanistic. Well, uh, Brent, maybe they, they, got, they got hunted. They, <laughs> so, they're that's right. Now. now that the only ones left are in Asia. <laughs> yes. We got we rid of them, them in all of North Dude, America. Dude, the Bering Strait. Yeah. Like, ever, ever, ever hear of that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could go bookworm on you too, dude. Uh, but they, yeah. did, they did see a lot of rabbit smoking pipes. Yeah, that's, that's that legit. That definitely happened. Yeah. That's oh, legit. Absolutely. I, yeah, it's like, oh, the other side. What's the other side of that paddle? Uh, it says, Alpha Omega for the bad. <laughs> Just like, thank you, sir. Let's man. Say a couple of wavy lines. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, the rabbit's working a pipe, and why is the rabbit working a pipe? Because he's smarter than the panda. Just like me, actually. What's, what's on the other side of that pipe? Well, it's, uh, it's a rabbit smoking that loud stuff. <laughs> uh, he's really, he's chiefing. He's, he's, he's going for he's it. He's getting gassed up tonight. He's, he's ready for it. And, and, and it's because he, uh, why? Because he's, he's stoned. That's why. It's not because he's smart. He's just stoned. Yeah, I don't know about like smarter than the panther, but he's like way more relaxed and probably doesn't have a headache. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, otherwise, it, does know. Is the rabbit also a, a rich banker? Because that, <laughs> the, the fact that at the end, he's like, I'm the rabbit, don't you understand? Yes. I'm oh, just like, sure. shut the fuck well, up. The way that this movie movie is revealed and once he gets into the woods and does literally everything right every single time anything comes upon him yeah. except it's, make that compass yeah, the first yeah, time that fucking compass, idiot it ass. is it's <laughs> like it was written by Charles Morris you know what I mean like it's, it's, <laughs> David <laughs> Mamet Mo- was a pen name for this guy and it's like how fucking smart I am and at the end when he you know spoiler alert at the end when he has that dramatic line where he's like they saved my life it's like yeah, that's that's a beautiful thing for respect for blah 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 these di- dudes who died next to you, but it's more like no one would ever believe his version of the. So we went to the woods, you see, and then I did this right, then I did this right, and everyone's like, "Let's yeah. do it wrong," and I'm like, "No, I'm going to do it right." This guy was a fucking idiot. Or this guy was a fucking idiot. <laughs> the guy that oh, the guy that the buried, absolute moron. He should just <laughs> listen to me. I would have been able to fix it. Uh, so they go upstairs. Um, I was expecting a full-on... By the way, we have to talk about Anthony Hopkins' dyed eyebrows in this film. Oh. Yeah, I don't know they what we're They were distracting. Why dist- can't we just let Anthony Hopkins be Anthony Hopkins? Is it the point that he's old, an older man oh, anyway? Well, like, I guess billionaires have their vanity, right? Like oh, Jeff yeah. Bozo has to go to the <laughs> gym or whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah, that dude loves working out. Yeah. For what and for uh-huh. whom, I don't know. To well, make to, his arms look like his head. <laughs> well, and to probably... Bald? While and naked, bald arms? Yeah, more like a penis. Oh, I see. Oh. Yeah. Oh. When naked, he would look more like an erection. Oh, it's so like I stand very, very still with like my arms at my side yeah, yeah, yeah. and whatnot, totally covered in oil. It's just like a big giant gun dosh <laughs> yeah. kind of all oh. the veins everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's just like that's mm-hmm. if you work out more, it more pronounced. So I'll get, get to it. you in two days or less. Absolutely. Well, what I meant about his biceps milk everywhere. is <laughs> there. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Now what <laughs> is by spitting milk? That's wonderful, <laughs> that was, isn't it? Though his bald head is like sh- he's like a cone head guy, right? Yeah, he, looks yeah. like, he looks like cone head, a little bit of a cone head yeah. arc, and on he's that trying guy. to make his biceps look like cones as well. Oh, yes. I see, oh, absolutely, see. Yeah. all canonical. It looks like a polygon. It looks like fucking a uh, Golden Eye sixty four character, really. Ooh, that's dude. Maybe he's going to just look like fucking Doctor Joe. That's that the, is the <laughs> ultimate body goal <laughs> for that guy. But yeah. Ella McPherson, they're not having sex. It's like, oh, I love you so much. And he's like, you know, my secretary got me this awesome book because it's a very special day. And she's like, yeah, whatever. Could you go make me a sandwich? 
And here's always the thing. It's, it's much like in movies when somebody's like, hey, let's order Chinese food. Mm-hmm. Someone's like, hey, can you make me a sandwich? Brant's like, hey, make me a sandwich. I'm having a 20-minute con- I'm saying yes. But I'm getting a 20-minute conversation. So what, do you, what, what do you want? What, what, what is what, the sandwich? What sure. are we talking right. here? You want yeah, peanut also, butter? Are we talking? Uh, you're in this weird lodge in the middle of nowhere. Went, oh, yeah. I'll just step up. I'll go get a sandwich. <laughs> I don't so That know. means you have to talk to this weird old guy. Maybe wake <laughs> no, him said, up. He, he says, says it. He's beginning. like, yeah, yeah, it's open. Go yourself. whenever you want to. Make a sandwich uh-huh. whenever y'all <laughs> yeah. want to. Now, now, it's the now sandwich to, bar. <laughs> now, be clear. There's only one kind of sandwich. It's a ham sandwich. We don't really carry anything else. <laughs> it looks like we're putting together a like tomato and cheese and mayonnaise sandwich when you can get the fuck out of America no, with that no, no, that nonsense you. sandwich. Also, like, what an unsexy thing. Like, I get this is all spoiler alert for the next two seconds. Uh, a <laughs> prank. Are sexy. Because what? <laughs> Sandwiches what? can be sexy. Yeah, yeah I, I, I guess so. But, like, it's all a ruse to get him yeah. downstairs because sure. it's a surprise birthday yeah. party. She, what break. she really wants is a sandwich with Alec Baldwin and... Well, she wants I, a sex sandwich, yeah, right? Yeah. And, yeah. You know, right? if sex anything, she'd be like, why don't you go downstairs... Maybe a glass of wine, yeah. mate. Mm-hmm. Me, Australian <laughs> L. McPherson in this movie. Oh, I didn't know that. She was oh, wine. crikey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, great. But a sa- I just, just make me a sandwich. I, no, I, nothing with onions. I'll get the farts. <laughs> like, yeah. just like, come on. It's no. not even a sexy. That's the problem. Yes. Is it is there are sexy sandwiches out there. Pastrami, please. Tongue. But, yeah. There, there I you mean, go. All right. So what is a sexy? I mean, we're talking like a, 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 a like maybe a, uh, an arugula with. I, I'm try, I'm trying he to find starts with arugula. I can't even believe it. Pe- something with hot peppers. <laughs> that's I think. a sexy sandwich. Yeah, you were saying. Spicy. What is the oh, fucking that's, thesis that's, of the sandwich, Cabby? You don't start with hot peppers. I'm sorry. I'm not a theor- well, theatrician of sandwiches. Guys, to make it sexy, you gotta be. It's gotta be fresh hunted meat, right, Brent? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that'll help. That'll help. But I feel like the yeah is the sam. Are we looking at the sandwich as sexy or the the best sandwich? For sexy time, that's because sexy. that's yeah, yeah, that's you know, if you're putting hot peppers on a sandwich, that is not a sexy time. Well, yeah, you yeah, shouldn't yeah, be totally. touching it. If you okay, you shouldn't be making it then, because then you have to have gloves. Yeah, clearly, and, and well, like if them. Oral's off the table, <laughs> yeah, that's sure, put hot peppers yeah, on your sandwich. Not a yes. Yeah, would yes. the pepper spice transfer <laughs> to the woman when you're or whoever when you're? Uh, yes, it would. I think yeah. that's that's the, that's, <laughs> that's the point of concern, man. And then you have to have like you got to have like a glass of milk on the bedside table. Yeah, little little spicy. Tingle. I see. Sure. You can't go from sandwich play into milk play. It's just, it's too <laughs> like feces. We're writing or, an episode of Seinfeld. I'm, right just, I'm just curious what, I mean, yeah, like, I, I I don't even know, like a light turkey are we talking? Like a little, <laughs> well, a little, well, little for a drier guy, size? I was say, the, the hot pepper thing for a guy like Hopkins, it sure. might work out in that, in the very way you're talking about because it's like, uh, I can't because I had hot pepper. <laughs> oh, I right. can't do it. But you, you can well, do it. You can do it all the time. Finger sandwiches. Like, did people ever fuck during tea time? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, the yeah. cucumber yeah. and butter. 4, or 4 or, p.m. Yeah. fucking. The, the original Netflix and chill, Eric. That's how that worked. <laughs> yeah, man. they were doing a dirt. <laughs> 4 p.m. hot tea and <laughs> fuck fiasco. Bunch of yeah. dirty right Remy's right after. <laughs> yeah, tea and plea? I don't know. <laughs> tea and plea. Yeah. 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 For sex? I, I don't get, know. I bet, it, I bet that started as a sex thing. The Royals yeah. were like, it's our sex but I like. I like the finger sandwich i think i think we're talking like a turkey like maybe some like radishes like a, a, radishes. a nice light mustard kind of a thing like a, a nice refreshing kind yeah, of yeah i was gonna say if you got a, a sense bon of humor <laughs> well bon, yeah that bon would be nice, nice. Bon get the bon press press good for sex tours yeah, yeah i think exactly. so oh come on <laughs> God damn that was the last thing that uh our friend david carity ate for sure <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah before he ate himself yeah like uh one sexy sandwich and your finest leather belt please <laughs> <laughs> extra oh. cilantro uh, all right. Uh, the point is, there was yes. no sandwich. There was never a, no. a sandwich that was intended to be. It was be a fake eaten. sandwich. Fake sandwich. A sandwich fake out because we got something I cannot sanction. A fucking surprise party for anyone over the age of 10. In the <laughs> middle of the night, this poor old man. Dude, he's lucky he didn't get startled this into is, a heart yeah, attack. Anybody thing, see yeah. the beginning of Get Shorty? Come on <laughs> yeah. now. They, right. they, they, they did. They were trying to kill him. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Al McPherson. <laughs> this proves that at the end of the movie, we're not sure. Al McPherson was in on it. Like, oh, oh, go 100%. downstairs. You're going to get murdered. <laughs> <Right. laughs> oh, what a shame you dropped dead. <laughs> but the movie, it's hilarious because the movie, because, you know, you know, it's a bear movie. And you know, what's going on? And like, you know, uh, LQ Jones really like, yeah, make sure you 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 always cover your food, especially big hams that I'm going to be leaving out. <laughs> and make sure you do that because the bears will smell to come in and blah, blah, blah. And you want to, this is a question I have for you, Brent. Is hmm. the, because uh, uh, is the 
if you see a bear, just like casually oh, walk his, away. His bear I, safety yeah. talk when uh, <laughs> when everyone comes in. Yeah, yeah. I can feel the anger emanating. <laughs> he, no, his his bear talk is pretty legit. Like okay. it depends on the type of bear. If you're no. if you're on the if you're on the eastern seaboard and you're talking about black bear, yeah, those right. guys are basically like rac- big raccoons at this point. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I used to chase them out of my driveway growing up. I yeah. stumbled upon one once as a child walking through the woods and it was one of the most terrifying experience, yeah. <laughs> uh, experiences of my life. Uh, it was sleeping and I was walking through the woods. Maybe Started it was, chucking it rocks was like at it? Down. No, I just came across it and was like, that ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah. went back the other way. It kind of stirred a little bit, but I was like, I am yeah. not fucking with this. In, in yeah, this well, that's a different scenario. If you startle a sleeping bear in the woods <laughs> yeah. versus one that's rooting around in your trash can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're in Alaska um, and you're talking about brown bears, grizzly bears, um, so all, all brown bears are grizzly bears. Oh, fuck. But See, now we're learning you, stuff. Yeah, there that's right. Now yeah. we're Here getting, we I'm, it's my time to shine. My you know, yeah. Because this is, we're coming off of our April where we didn't know fucking monkeys from chimps to whatever <laughs> oh. else. So we're starting fresh here learning about bears. Yes. This month. So you're I saying, loved sh- April. Shoot, shoot on sight is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> you see a grizzly. Not unless you have a bear tag. We'll get into that later. There's a season, there's a fucking permit to the Right, and you're not, you're certainly not using uh, you're certainly not using like a a, a friggin' like drop um, <laughs> bear pit. <laughs> yeah, but, we'll that, oh, but man, his the um, Home Alone antics that they get into uh, Deadfall or whatever. Yeah, dead they, deadfall. Yeah. That's um, I'm gonna put out these Christmas ornaments for this bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh uh, Alec Baldwin. Uh, now, uh, we're going to watch this old movie and make sure that the bear thinks where there's a bunch of gangsters in here. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe it worked. That bear slipped on all those micro machines. And I got, <laughs> you even got the bear to deliver us pizza. It's, you scared it off of the movie. I made my parents disappear. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'd watch all those movies. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Brett, I just need more uh, trivia facts like this, uh, the, the Grizzly Brown thing, because mm-hmm. like I have a local uh, trivia uh, at a, a brewery right near me, <laughs> and the amount of times I'm bombing at this thing, <laughs> you oh. might as well call me Carlos the Jackal. How many bear questions are you getting? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just preparing. Okay. I just, oh, just, okay. it's, never, it's never immediate. Like, you get like maybe one or two movie yeah. and music stuff. And then it's mostly like history, which of course uh, my wife Sophia nails. Yeah, like, you're useless on that. I absolutely cannot be helped on yeah, that. Uh, but like science stuff, like and and and, and like nature stuff, I, it does come up. Oh, that. you're also bad okay. at that. I am yeah. terrible at that. I can put up a tent. That's about it. But so yeah, you're saying you yeah, can't your just, pants. You can't just say I'm walking backwards, bear. We're cool buddies. Is that how that yeah, works? Yeah, you have to be chill. You definitely do not want to run. A bear will absolutely outrun you. Any kind of bear. Mm-hmm. Um, it does not run Anthony Hopkins in this film. No. <laughs> they, oh, <laughs> I cannot wait. The whole reason I'm here is just for that one moment. <laughs> sure. Can't I believe can't. I'm outrunning this bad with my <laughs> he's, medium whoa, whoa, whoa. He's a, guy. Cardio paid off. <laughs> he's a rich guy. He might have had like the bionic woman surgery. Oh, totally, um, dude. We can rebuild legs. him faster, stronger, <laughs> exactly. metal. Yeah, okay. And he would, at the time, he would, Anthony Hopkins would be number one on the list of people who would get those kinds of surgeries. But we, it's true. <laughs> but we get a, got power. We get a fake out. Out here because we're you know it's 1997 you're watching this movie you know it's a bear movie and then Alec Baldwin is wearing a bear costume oh right what <laughs> is a bear a bear rug yes. he's got a bear rug bear on rug, yeah. yeah but yeah. there's a bear there is a bear sound when he yes, opens yes, the door yes, there is a growl I don't know where it comes from <laughs> you know where it may have come from the mouth of Frank Welker <laughs> yes. I didn't check to see if Welker oh, had really? any fucking I, voice credits on this movie I thought it was L. McPherson's tummy <laughs> waiting for oh, that sandwich they forgot that sexy sandwich <laughs> yeah. dude oh shit you're right well, Wait, it, what's that? Are you telling me that sandwich was a lie? <laughs> you just got me down here to surprise me. I made this sandwich with a knife. We're well, getting I, divorced. And here's the thing, too. If I'm making a sandwich and like I'm going downstairs for my wife, uh, I'm like, I'm doing a lot of yelp. Yeah, they don't got it. To, what, so, yeah, you, we're looking at tomatoes. <laughs> mayonnaise. I'm waking up everybody. Yeah, you want to make sure everybody knows you're putting in the work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to make it, it, make it sound like you're in a fucking like actual uh, or I, I guess, factory. I guess, if I'm talking to Elbert first. No, they don't have Vegemite. It, it, I'm, I'm positive they don't. We also have like some fake, like scare fake outs. Yes, like, yeah. I think there's like a door open at one yeah, point yeah. because it's like, it's 40 minutes till we see the bear, so we got to have something, I guess, is the idea. That is 40 long minutes mm-hmm. till Bart the Bear shows yes. up. I need maybe a little, like, 
Bart the Bear, like we're doing our party and then like, what's Bart the Bear up oh, to? Oh, I would love to know. You know, because he's like a fully realized character Absolutely. in this movie. He's, he's a man. Um, he's a man. Let's see him like uh, on his first, like I have a scream opening kind of. Oh, movie. yeah. Like fantastic. he's eating some kids or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like the, what's uh, your favorite Yogi Bear episode? <laughs> <laughs> Just like I, I recently watched uh, Prophecy by John Frankenheimer. With oh, yeah. The, 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 uh, the what what actually turned into the South Park joke about man bear pig mm. it is that creature. Oh right, and, oh, and there's yeah. a big, uh, weird uh, opening kill in that with uh, some dog death. But uh, I, I, I that dog is it's funny because I was watching the uh, outdoorsy movies this yeah. week just in getting to this movie. To build, you, build yourself up to to see that. Did you check out the great outdoors as well? Oh yeah, where where the bears actually oh. get on the car and oh. like start pushing on. What the do you car. think of that one, Brant? Love it. Love it. Got that on. Yeah, I got that original VHS too. <laughs> Why don't you find yourself a spin cycle? <laughs> I just wonder about uh, you know finding other animals in the wild, like the raccoons in the Great Outdoors, that could be subtitled for our benefit. Mm, so right. when you stumble across them in the wild, it's like you know they roar at you, but it's a subtitle like, "Hey man, it's cool." I just. I got off. diarrhea. You know, leave me alone right now. It's a, yeah, like kinda... life is a rat race for them too. Like, so show Bart the bear. Like, oh god, another day of this. You know, yeah. Got to go down to the river. And I find looked salmon. by the way, uh, Bart the bear, the entertainer that he was, died in like two thousand. So Bart the bear, no idea about nine eleven. Good thank God. Yeah, yeah. what a plastic He disease. might have lived longer. He had cancer. Oh, oh man, how the fuck does a yeah. bear get cancer? Only yeah. a good day, young. Did he sire any like children? Was it, was, was there a Bart the second? There, there is a Bart, uh, yeah. a Bart, a Bart Junior. It's oh. not his bear, but he. Oh. Uh, Bullshit. Uh, it's man. a brother and sister. Grizzly went to Doug after uh, they couldn't find the Got mother. It. Okay, and so so yeah. Bart wasn't the. Bart wasn't the, the dad. He was just the dad who stepped up. Is He's what you're getting at? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Step bear. It's kind of weird because we have this like dumb little uh, surprise party. One of the uh, friends here or yeah. people, hangers on, is Catherine Wilholt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why? From like Witchboard and a thousand other things. <laughs> yeah, she's, and she's, she's in like 14 roles. seconds of it. It's, well, it's, 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 there's just, it's just her and uh, Harold Paranaw who's... Uh, Man, dead meat yeah. as a, of the highest order. And then uh, just some other guy. And it's like, oh, we're going to hang out. You're going to have to have like, sorry, it's my, my husband's birthday. We're going to have to do like a weird, <laughs> like kind of a six and a half minute surprise party. But then we'll all go to bed. It's going to be weird. I'm going to pretend that I need a sandwich. <laughs> uh, he's going to go down and make it. And so Alec uh, needs you to put on the, the bear rug. That'll be funny. Uh, Harold <laughs> needs you to leave the door open. That'll be scary. <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> not, nothing to do. You just stand back and laugh. Uh, do that. Do that realistic growl you do. <laughs> exactly. That's oh, the perfect. One. Yeah, they'll think that's a bear. Excellent. Now, LQ, I want you to just laugh at any of his little facts he tells you. <laughs> he's going to have a lot of little facts, and he's going to want to tell you about them. So it's like, oh, you didn't forget my birthday after all. Uh, she gives him a pocket white a pocket watch oh, with yeah. an inscription like. The only man I ever loved. You're the best. Thank you for the billions of dollars. I hope you don't die. Pretty generic. Like, if you're trying to cover up, you're fucking banging some other fella, you uh -huh. know? Maybe not as, like, Hallmark party. Maybe a little more personal. It's a very, like, to my most darling, yeah. thank you for everything. The, the, the thank you that Hopkins gives to both her and to Baldwin, I think is the most legit thank you I've ever seen in a movie. His, look at his eyes and he <laughs> is so genuine. The way he looks at her and he says, Man, this is the most wonderful gift. Thank you. I have legitimately received friends uh, uh, gifts from people who I love and I have never been that sincere saying <laughs> thank you to them. The way he says it is next level and you're like, you didn't have to be that good. <laughs> For this moment, no, he in can't, dude, this he can't turn it off. He can't well, turn it off. Man. No, and Brad, it's because he, you see, the rabbit has to mm -hmm. be ready for these things. Oh, and it has yep. to, if he's smart, he's smarter than everybody. Mm -hmm. He's also stoned out of his gourd. but he <laughs> is prepared for these situations, and he has to be. It is funny when he gets the knife too. Yeah. He acts like he's holding a Excalibur. For yeah. a <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really, it's cute. Like he's like a little kid. He's really happy to have it. We've got some like uh, silly little like we're playing knifey quartery. Yeah, like, whatever this like someone gives you a knife, you got to give him a quarter. That's a legit it's thing. A le legit That's thing. a legit really? thing. But it's a it's a it origin. He says it's like a a superstition. Like the way he says it, it makes it sound like it's some Hope again them. like yeah some down home country thing. But it's a it's an Asian tradition. If you give someone a knife, 
they have to sort of pay you for it. So you give them a coin or a dollar. Yeah. Mm. And that way you've paid for it. It wasn't a gift. Otherwise, it will sever your friendship. Mm. It's so, kind of interesting yeah. uh, how this movie manages to dumb that eloquent tradition <laughs> down so much of the part. You just got to give them a quarter. It's like a can of soda. You have to fit in another wonderful line like, did you know a cantaloupe can also be a raccoon? <laughs> <laughs> he is just you, that dude that you do not want to hear shit yeah, from. Just, God, it's just man. an answer for everything. Did you hear about? Yeah, I fucking heard about it, dude. Enough already. You've been you know, watching the, the History Channel all day long and he's just going <laughs> to tell you about it. You know, the ancient Hopi, shut the fuck up about the ancient Hopi. I do not care. I'm tired of it. Did you know that this hotel was built on ancient Indian? Shut the fuck up, dude. Uh, no one cares. The next morning, uh, maybe the, uh, Anthony Hopkins and Ellen McPherson had sex. Who knows? Definitely not. It doesn't mm. seem like the, it's the right situation. It seems like everyone can hear everything. Look, of. if I get uh, spooked by your more handsome friend yeah. wearing a bearskin rug, yeah. I'm not up for intercourse that night. I'm just putting it out there. So she's, you know? she's a model. She's very sexy on the water sure. here. And we're yeah. doing uh, like sexy in, Pocahontas. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Some indigenous yeah. chic <laughs> eep and a half, whatever this fucking outfit is. Good God. No, thank you. The, and Baldwin's from Chicago. Oh, I was just going to say, I really, it, it dawned on me later, but I really have to know what this photo shoot is for sure. because, <laughs> you know, so Baldwin is our fancy schmancy fashion photographer and we've got this you know 90s fancy schmancy photo shoot going on mm -hmm. but then he so easily wants the other guy to be the model and I'm like what are we set? and he's making a thing about the shoes I'm like are we putting the high heels on the guy to sell the shoes oh, that would what is this photo shoot for? <laughs> I get the feeling it's like a two paneler where mm -hmm. like you're gonna have Ella Pearson on one in this like Coachella fucking get up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and then on the other, you're going to have the serious guy with the shoes and like, gotcha. it's, just, it's, I mean, it's the sex sells 90s. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's you true. have to have a yeah. model. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then you eventually get over to like, I guess, well, no, I mean, then eventually it's like Johnny Depp doing like, Oh God! Like fucking La Tigra or yeah, whatever yeah. the fuck <laughs> shit he's doing. Oh Savage, yeah, yeah, Savage. Savage. That's right. It's like La Tigra's a band. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, but he's like, you know, none of this is authentic. I need this guy. I want this guy, yeah. Jack Jack Crow. And he's pointing at it. And he's like, well, he's only twenty miles up the road. But this is when <laughs> LQ goes up to Hopkins when they're watching. And he's like, ah, he's like, beautiful place, isn't it? It's like, yeah, it really, it, it truly is. And he's like. Well, for just thirty to forty million dollars, he Oof. shoots his shot too early. Is that yes. Right? Yep. You want to like? You want to just like? Can I just get your email? That's you the wanna, you be friend, be friendly with him, then right. get the email. You want to wait till he comes back from nearly dying from a bear? Be like, yeah. don't you want to burn these woods? Down? <laughs> and you know, it's kind of interesting, right? Because you, you know, whatever. We're jumping all over, but the last like sequence of the movie. Spoiler alert: He gets back fine or alive yeah. at least. I totally expected, because this is like, it's a days long Anthony Hopkins getting visited by three ghosts yeah, in a way. Sure. <laughs> and so like when he gets back, I, he looks at LQ Jones and I was like, here it goes. Here's where he's going to be like, and now y'all funny million dollars for your piece of shit resort or whatever. I'm going to help this like small man, like yeah. make this enterprise. No, no. I'm just going to stare at that guy and then fucking go inside. I, nope. I, I'm ready to do it. This will be the first Jurassic world. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh, I don't shit. This will, we'll put oh. the, the Laposauruses over here. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins, let me try to sell you on this. It's another business I got. So one lakeside real estate uh, resort and lodge in Alaska. Also, Mining for amber yeah. in South America and Central America. We're going to find all sorts of dino DNA, whichever one you want, baby. This is a mosquito in amber. <laughs> now, just imagine. You see how beautiful these woods are? Imagine a T-Rex tearing through them, <laughs> just stomping his little feet through your woods, stepping on trees and such. Now, if we recreated dinosaurs, it would be ethical to hunt them. Right? Because... <laughs> you, I mean, of all the things you'd have to fucking keep right? in check population-wise, absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I think that would be Jesus. top of the list. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... I don't understand. This is why, you know, the people in Jurassic World, Dominion especially, needed your book, Brant, because how is it <laughs> you fuck it up that much that yeah. dinosaurs are ruling the world again? It's true. You need to train... 
real hunters mm-hmm. to go out there that know what they're fucking doing. Right. That was the only problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Not more Chris Pratt's who get, go there. Get those dinos off the streets. Get those clone girls off the streets. We can't have those running roughshod across the, the, the fields. Yeah, I hate I don't those think more. Idea. You know, that's what we should be really hunting. Clone girls. Yeah. Absolutely. Or clone but, whoever's. That's, we well, should what have if, you, if you make a clone of yourself, then you should be able to do whatever. Oh, right? oh yeah. Like, absolutely. That's, oh, well, I've been saying that for that. years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's get a good 69 going, you know? <laughs> I was going to say, you could do anything with them? Well, it's your clone. Yeah. Wow. Would that like <laughs> would that end space time in some way? Oh, a little time cop scenario. Right. Like, oh, uh, same matter can't come in its own mouth. <laughs> you know. Are you sure about that? <laughs> well, I'm really gonna, we'll test it. We'll test um, it. Ron Silver's got it. But so he uh like it's kind of like one of these things when you're at a party and then yeah. someone's like, Hey, you want to go on a beer run? And like that's always a dicey <sighs> proposition when you're like yeah. the fifth one in the car. You're like, yeah. you don't really need me to go with you guys. But here's the problem because you can see both sides. Of it, right, at least with the beer run scenario, yeah. maybe not so much find this indigenous dude to take his picture scenario, but with the beer run, yeah. right, it's at least like, yeah, I'm gonna miss a lot of the party, but when I come back, I'm gonna be a fucking hero, sure, you know. So that's like what you have to weigh if yeah. you're gonna be this fifth guy in the beer run. How valuable, you know, is the this comeback. photograph? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. And that that's when, uh, yeah, Baldwin's trying to like wrap up the photo shoot and get get going, and he. He's making this. Uh, um, he's making all this stink about the shoes, and the shoes yeah. aren't shiny enough. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Oh right! And yeah. he's got a. Uh, uh, Hopkins is like you know the inside of a banana peel will shine <laughs> shoes. <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> I know. And you get you get the tiniest little bit of Jack Donaghy yeah. when <laughs> he gives this look. He 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 like takes a beat. <laughs> and he looks around and then he looks at the other guy and he's like, I didn't know. That. Did you know? That? You know, and he's got a head. He goes off on this rant. Um, That's brilliant, Lemon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Of a bad appeal. Who would have thought? But that appeals. Uh, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, and so like, it's like hey, we're going to go on an adventure, Charles. Why don't you, he calls him Charles 340 times. More, apparently. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it is like, it becomes a thing where uh, he starts using it at the end of every sentence yes. at one part of the movie where it's just like, you think we're getting out of this, hey, Charles? Like the set, like he ends every sentence with, hey, Charles? What, what, hey, Charles, Charles? Charles, do you want to go, Charles? Charles, Charles? Shut Charles. the fuck up, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and he's just telling him, like, and he's constantly checking in with him. Thinking, shit now, Charles. <laughs> yeah. I'm wiping now, Charles. It I'll does feel like soon, a, a movie thing where people are saying people's names yeah, way right. more than ever happens. But I think yes. this movie... I don't think I've ever seen it as bad as it is in this <laughs> yes. movie. I've never heard someone's name. I have never said the names of my yeah. friends <laughs> no. in real life as many times as are uttered in this movie. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. Hey, dude. Hey, brother. Yeah, exactly. How you doing? Brother, like, yeah. very, there's a, a whole, there's so many other, I never, this is a mammoth thing. This yeah. is just very clearly, he doesn't wag the dog too. Yeah. Uh, I think he even does it in Hannibal, yeah. like, uh, which he did work on, by the way. Oh, really? Was that right? Yeah, the Ridley Scott hand. Oh, he, he did that as well. And like, uh, command the door, eh? Yeah, yeah. We, we oh, do like sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they get, now let's all get into the ricketiest plane I've ever seen. This launch pad McQuack core shit that I, you, you could not pay me a billion dollars to get into. Even launch pad would be like, I don't know, Mr. McD. The structural integrity of this plane looks pretty terrible. Well, we uh, we forgot to mention before, before they fly to the lodge, yeah. you get a little like, um, you know, Bob, do you know what foreshadowing is? <laughs> and uh, when they mention bird strikes. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. they do say, like, oh, you look out for those bird oh, strikes. Yeah. It's yeah. a really bad Baldwin line, too, where, like, someone mentions bird strikes and he goes, bird strikes? What are bird strikes? Does anyone on this plane have the definition of a bird strike? <laughs> and someone has to give it. Yeah. That's one of those, like, you know, people in corn fuck wherever yeah. might not know what you're talking about. But, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. You're in a plane. You're talking bird strike. Seems pretty uh, yeah. straightforward as to what yeah. we're discussing. I'm gonna use some context clues. I'll be honest, dude. A 14 year old fat kid from the Bronx needed some help with that. I was like, the fuck's a bird strike? Bird strike. <laughs> bird strike what is that? Heck when a chicken, no. When a- <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Egg production has ceased. Yes. Uh, but well, Steve, it's like you know, in uh, where you come from, it's uh, like when a plane takes off. You know, there's like people like hucking beer bottles yeah, at sure, it, you know, it, to yeah, scare yeah. away the birds. Right. <laughs> 
So a bird strike doesn't happen. I, I think That's isn't a bird strike what happens in Chicken Run? <laughs> yeah, yes. I do believe they are doing a, they bird, are doing a, a bird strike. strike. Well, that's what happened in uh, Sully. Sully. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, Cinema's most God. famous bird strike. Oh, man. Beautiful. <laughs> he probably <laughs> saw this and he's like, I could do that. So they, I could have I could have laid that plan. I would have been fine. Oh, wow. oh I thought you were talking so- about the birds saying, oh, that could have been me. <laughs> no, Sully just in the theater, like at that age, he's probably Sully like. Sully Sullenberger. At like 38 or something. Yeah. Going to the movies and being like. Oh, that idiot. I could have done it. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have now. <laughs> Honey, watch it. One of these days, a bunch of birds are going to strike my plane and I'm going to land it safely on a river. Look, it's a fine movie. I don't want to get <laughs> onto anything. It's a, he's a good performance. It just doesn't make any sense. Do you think that's like, if you go to the movies with Sully Sullenberger, it's 100%. insufferable if there's an airplane? Oh, forget about it. Yeah. Oh, any pilot. Any pilot. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh, well, that wouldn't happen. Yeah, I know. It's fucking die hard. All right, shut up. <laughs> Sullivan, I'm leaving you. And it's because you won't shut up. <laughs> up about fucking flight. <laughs> Why? Why? You wouldn't have survived. You well, wouldn't have survived either. Whatever, Chris. He was drunk behind the wheel of that plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so, like, they, they go to Jack Hawk's place. He's got a note that says "Gone hunting on it, hunting a bear or whatever." So then, like, uh, and, he, and uh, this is the beginning of Baldwin's weird. I don't know if it's him. It's, oh, no, it's probably Mammoth. Like, there's a lot of like weird, like, gay panicky stuff. And he's like, "Oh yeah, oh, oh look, he's hunting. How butch." Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I uh, it's, better take this note so no one will know where we're going. I don't understand what that is. I better it's take this with me. It's a, uh, it's a memento. <laughs> He's a collector. <laughs> he is a collector. A collector of notes that uh, tells people where they've been or where they're going. Um, There's another bit of foreshadowing. With a, it's a bear pit. The it's bear, a bear, it's yeah. a bitch, catch bears. It's a bear oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, He right, does right, another right, little yeah. Jack Donaghy. It's a bear pit. <laughs> and then they take they take off again and they run into a million birds. This is a, this it's pretty is a great strike. And you know, decent sequence, yes. I have to say. Sure, it was yeah. awesome. Uh, not too shabby. The pilot is just like, oh, fuck. It's Dude, amazing. This pilot eats fucking shit in this yeah. movie, man. This guy. And no one cares. No one gives a fuck. <laughs> First of all, no one gives a fuck, which is really sad. But like these birds are coming through this window, pelting this dude in the face. This uh, plane goes down into a lake and we have a really cool, like they used an actual uh, tank to film this whole yeah. sequence. Very cool underwater shit. Uh, uh, Harold Perrineau, like kind of getting stuck in the plane yeah. a little bit. But this pilot, we are not making an effort to save this man whatsoever. I, this dude just goes he's down dead. with the I craft. don't know how any of them would have... The, you see that, like, the fuselage hit the water. Yeah. And just looking at it, I was like, oh, you guys are toast. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, man. For Harold Perrineau, I would rather drown in this lake than what 100%. you get. Uh, you just keep me in that lake. I'll be in Davy Jones' locker tonight, man. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Because yeah. you come up from the water and you look around and it's like, all right, it's me, Harold Perrineau. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin <laughs> and one's a rich fashion photographer the other one's a fucking bill- oh I'm fucked I'm so <laughs> fucked as me Harold Perrineau yeah. the only black guy in this adventure right now and when Hopkins gets him out of it he's dead like he, he's out like yes. he's gone oh that's like, right he, yeah, he, he, he's like out for the count yeah. but he just barely gets him out of there with his the, the, the new pocket knife yes yeah. I'm handy didn't it we should say, uh, right before the hilarious bird strike, oh, right. uh, Hopkins turns to Baldwin and just goes, so, how are you planning on killing me? Bird strike immediately, yeah. <laughs> which is a great transition. But I think like, this movie flirts with like Hitchcocky and It suspense, does, but, but it yeah. never bothers to follow through exactly. on that whatsoever. Well, that's like, I mean, what an interesting idea of what Mamet could have done with that, but like, it's just this language he has that yeah. like erodes everything else, to, at least for me, with yeah. a lot of this stuff. And like, I understand a plane crash happened. If I survived this, and it, it's Anthony Hopkins, yeah. Harold Perrineau, uh, and Alec Baldwin, and get up there, Alec Baldwin, I would get my breath and be like, "What the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What the, fuck, <laughs> what the totally. hell is that? What? <laughs> why do you think that? What the fuck is up with you, man?" <laughs> but he was right. Wasn't it, exactly. But like, it's, right. it's just immediately like um, survival. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just, 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 let, let's just forget everything that happened, yes. and we're just gonna. Uh, Get Harold Perrineau's water out his lungs. Just murdering someone for their wife? Yeah. There's other yeah, there's other things out there, you know? Yeah, well, wait till that, like, list grows wait. a little bit and then maybe do the deed. Wait for him. Watch Noirs. Wait for him to pay you to kill her. Exactly. Wow. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely. how it goes. Yeah, let's get I mean, paid twice. Also, like, you're Alec Baldwin and she's Al McPherson and he's Anthony Hopkins. Just wait it out. Yes, it's exactly. Fun. It's math. Yeah. Come on. You're fine. <laughs> Long game. And, uh, but so, like, now, yeah, they do see, 
uh, Anthony Hopkins because he's the world's greatest genius or yep. uh, does CPR on Harold Perrin and saves his life. And it's like, well, how are we going to get out of this? It's like, well, I know everything about everything. That's going to be just as fine. <laughs> and he's like, you know, you can make a... Which we also learned from his little book. Uh, he, I think he tells people earlier. He Lost tells in them the about, woods. Yeah, or yeah. you can do the... Uh, you can do a compass with a mag with a with a pin, and you use a paper clip, you know, and that's sort of something. Uh-huh. You know, you can make a hummus out of a radio, <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't work. Even though, I mean, they follow it, but they, you know, they think it's south, but it's not. Which is also, I mean, I was reading this. It also makes sense. Like, just look where the sun is going. That's how you figure right? that out. Yeah. Sure. It's kind of stunning that they never watched the sun once. Even me, yes. fucking gorilla boy that knows nothing about survival. Yeah. Well, gorillas like, are good at survival. Yeah, well, I meant like just a fucking like big oh. idiot. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Right. Like even I was like, hey, man, why don't we, why don't we look to the skies when the sun is out? <laughs> right, yeah. Try, give that a shot. You know. I think I could survive this no problem. Oh, no, no problem. Oh, really? We would yeah. all be fucking no, dead. I, Brant would be the only one alive. I'd be pretty <laughs> good at it, I think. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Let we, him have this. Let yeah. him have it. Oh, I, sure. I, I, I. We do get this hilarious close-up of his fucking little birthday gift book falling yes. in the water. Oh, yeah. And it's like, well, good thing he memorized all of it, I guess. Well, he's a bookworm. Yeah. Oh, it's I'm in the, the worm's brain now. <laughs> uh, could you give me that book? I'm going to eat through it. I'm the bookworm. <laughs> But sustenance, you understand. <laughs> uh, but so, like, yeah, we're going to go south. It's going to be this way. And even, uh, that doesn't feel fucking south, man. Speaking of bookworms, <laughs> I mean, yeah. should, they should eat bugs at some point to survive. That would they, be an well, interesting scene. Well, the weirdest part is yeah, that yeah. They, it, they don't eat for most of the movie. Like, yeah. They only eat the bear when they eat the bear. And they're right. like, they're not complaining about hunger at all. Like they just, you know, they ate the pilot, maybe. Oh, I was so full. <laughs> I just don't understand how this whole sequence happens and the three of them get to shore and you know yeah we gotta maybe we're gonna make a compass out of a leaf and a piece of metal or maybe we're gonna dig our own graves whatever we're gonna do Mm -hmm. uh but what we're not gonna do once at all is mention that pilot ever again (laughs) that dude is dead (laughs) and he's instantly erased from this movie erased from their memory plane flew itself plane (laughs) just get fucked Jerry, odd o pilot. Whoever. But yeah. you know what we have to do is we do have to be a little homophobic, just mm-hmm. to make oh. sure. Oh get yeah, the pulse of the nation at the time, and like because uh, they all get they they get Harold Perrineau uh, coughs up a bunch of water, and they're all up and they're like, so what are we gonna do? And fucking Alec Baldwin says, bear our feelings with this list oh, yeah. that nearly drew. Well, me he back. does quote unquote gay voice like three to five times yeah. in this yeah, movie. Yeah. It's it's like go to yeah. joke in this movie, mm-hmm. which yeah. is. And he does it multiple times. It's at least no five sense. times. If the <laughs> trivia is to believe, be believed, he slips into this voice five times in Jesus this movie. Uh, so they're going. And yeah, I think Alec Baldwin. Well, this is when we find out he he took the note. Oh, right? yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, just, that's pretty. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. What, for what reason? Well, sometimes I just, I get itchy fingers. Just <laughs> can't help but taking things off doors. I, 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 I took the note, three rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> and, and then I took your wife. I mean, nothing. <laughs> I was hoping uh, Jack Hawk would hold it in the uh, ad that we're doing. I thought it would be a nifty thing, you know, just throw something in there, give it a little character. I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to die. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did the, the, the note $30 from his drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, took the cork out of his piggy bank and traded that. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're going, and this is what he's like. Why, why would I want to kill? Why would I want to kill you, Ch- Charles? Why would I want to kill you, Charles? Kill you, Charles, Charles, and Ch- like, Charles. For my wife, of Charles. For my wife, of course. And it's like whatever they go. He's like, no, I don't want to kill you. By the way, and this is sort of setting up what the movie is like. I need you to survive at this point. And I mean, like, to if Hopkins is to be believed, apparently the script was better than the movie. It was more of a character thing, not as much of an action movie. What's funny is, yeah, I saw that uh, in the trivia that even Baldwin said that. It's like, that director fucked it up. But I think this, I mean, I, I kind of <laughs> like that it's an action movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I can't see it, another version of this where it is like the will of two men against each yeah. other, yada, yada. Well, I mean, I, well, that's what the trailer like yes. promised. That was more of what the trailer showed was them like, it was going to be a showdown between these two men. Right. And, like, and that's not really that what it much, is at all. That very much doesn't happen. But also, like, it, it is weird to me calling this an action movie because you have a plane crash and a bear fight. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's not that it's bad, but I don't think it's enough to call it an action movie. Yeah. It's a movie where we are doing a lot of walking. Yeah. A lot of talking. And for a couple of scenes, we fight a bear. A survivalist like thriller. They do try to... Uh, 
when they're in the woods, it's like, okay, well, they have to work together if they want to survive. Right. And then as soon as they get to the the canoe and the shack part, they're like, okay, now yes. you can. That's the now thing. Now it can be man versus man, not yeah. man versus bear. Right. right. I mean, we got the stuff out of the way that we want to like get people into the theater for. Yeah. And now this is the movie that we wanted the whole time. Well, I mean, you want to condense that first part then, if that's the case, and expand Precisely. The, the, the cabin. You I, know mean, what I mean, because like, this is a two-hour movie, and it's 40 minutes until you get to that bear. Yes. Mm-hmm. Something's got to give. Please. This is a 100-minute movie. Bear with us. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Eric Siska, you dog. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. That might, I mean, I'm going to be quiet be... for the next 15 minutes again. <laughs> <laughs> That might be, I mean, to me, like, I don't know if I'm alone on this, but I did feel the time heavy duty in this movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't really feel it that much. I understand what you're saying because it takes 40 minutes to get to the bear. But sure. I, I feel like I was going down memory lane yeah. watching this. That okay. Is, I was remembering. Well, this is a cable classic. Yes, this is an ass bag. I I, oh, it's like, oh, it's this part. Is this the part where Harold Perrineau <sighs> cuts his whole leg off? Okay, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I was remembering happy times of watching television. Well, that's sure. like, to me, this is very similar to, I think it, uh, Friedkin's uh, The Hunted where like oh, everything about Bidusio, it that yes, movie? Yeah. everything about it is way more promising than the actual movie when you sit yep. down to watch it it's a, it had a very deceptive trailer I remember sitting in the theater being like this ain't what I signed but, but this sounds like most yeah. movies now, Brett, is The way. Hunted in your book is it about do you have things about CIA hitmen that are actual hunters is that yes. I've, I've never seen that one. Oh, oh really man. I've never seen it uh, yeah. it's not good but it's worth seeing it's, mm-hmm. it, there's some parts of it that are good you didn't like miss it for the book or anything <laughs> no, it's, gotcha. a, it's okay, a watchable I have not seen that one either but I I have seen The Hunted from 95, I think, starring oh, yes. Christopher Lambert. Oh, Lambert. Yeah. That one is nuts. That's got ninjas in it. It right? does indeed. Is that the one where he's trying to get out of that jail that's kind of like the jail from Dark Knight Rises? If there's ninjas in it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I guess I don't particularly remember ninjas that, in that movie. I think, I think that's right. Yeah. He has to get out of like a, I was born in it kind of prison. Uh, oh, no. They've put me in the... The pit prison. Yeah, I'm in this hole. Yeah, maybe I have to not. impress no, these ninjas. Right. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> so he, so like we're walking, and are we ever? Yeah, we're walking a long <laughs> time, and this is what I think we start. We do get the first bear sighting. Yes, Baldwin does a really good like. Come on! Yeah, like when they got to start running, really great. Bart the bear is great. I love this droopy lower lip. It's a it's a real nice pronounced. It's a choice. Uh, feature. It's a it is good yeah. choice by Bart. <laughs> well, the bear. well, the guy's got presence. Yeah, he does. Yeah. You think That's, that was like, uh, Steve, you think that was like a J.R. Jim Ross situation? Or like, <laughs> yo, we're talking with no. that group there. Ah. No, I think it was more of... A, I'm just glad that Steve's the only room in only oh, one yeah, the room that understood that reference. Yeah, 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 no that wrestling thing. So the, yeah. the rest of you don't know how much of an asshole <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's more of a... No, I think it's a, no it's a, he's a bear and who cares? Exactly. That's well, what, I mean, he, this, but this, I, I've rarely seen a bear with this kind of presence. You could put this guy up against Robert Mitchum and he would do... He, oh, he oh, almost won an Oscar. Oh, oh, really? Bart the Bear was nominated for an Oscar in his, uh, for his work in The Bear. Oh, wow. Well, like, really? Was he, mm-hmm. was he up against, like, Jack Nicholson or was he yeah. up against, like, other animals? Oh, I should have. I didn't look at who else. <laughs> no, he, no, he uh, present, the Bear he, from The Bear. He, he just the, presented it. He just, they don't no, no, nominate. He get, they no, he almost got the Oscar. Bears for Oscars. It was a difficult performance. Yes. <laughs> if, if you've never seen The Bear, you have to. It's gorgeous. It's like the idea of, like, he go, almost won. Uh, they, they go to Daniel Day Lewis and he's got his hands tattooed. Yeah. They go oh, to like Nicholson. Well, remember Jimmy the Crow was probably another contender back in the day. That was oh a, from uh, uh, it's, it's Wonderful Life. Yes, yes. <laughs> but famous Crow actor. <laughs> but <laughs> Bart the Bear <laughs> presented at the Academy. Yeah, I think Award. he almost won it. He <laughs> he was up, don't you remember it? He was up against uh, Stevie, who played Bingo and Bingo. Uh, got it. Okay. Oh, well, that was a tough year then. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. One of the Homeward Bound movies was out around then. Probably. I'm sure. Second oh, one was oh, Bart, Bart, Second Bart one? the Bear passed on Homeward Bound. He's like, no, thank yeah, you. And then he passed. I've away. worked with that Golden Retriever before. I'm not <laughs> doing it again. Both of those movies, I think, came out before this movie, though. Mm. Probably right. Yeah. Um, and so the uh, the way they get around it, there's like a tree that they make a bridge out of, and like everyone's kind of crossing they it. They walk across it standing. You can shimmy. Yes, <laughs> of course, yes, if you're doing yes. that, you don't walk standing up on the law. Like, yeah, to be clear, this not, is a, it's not into the playground sand pit if you fall off. <laughs> I also love how the two strapping young men, Harold Perno and Alec Baldwin, are like, "We're gonna go first. You yeah, go yeah. third, old man." Well, dude, I'm sorry. Listen, here's the deal. That's a thing. That's a thing, right? 
this is a rich piece of shit. Fuck this asshole. You want to fucking fall off a waterfall? I don't care, you rich piece of shit. The people who have to work for a living go first. Yeah, but if I survive, if we all survive, then maybe I'm getting a little peace at the oh, end. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The presumption, though, is that he's going to have like a three ghost situation. Yes. You oh, know, right. and as we see, LQ Jones gets the shaft at the end of this movie. I, well, you're asking for 40 mil. I think if I if I get Alec Ball, if I get uh, him out of this situation, it's like just a million dollars. Well, that, that's nothing that's, to you. It's yeah. literally nothing. I mean, yeah. honestly, like $40 million for a lodge renovation in Alaska in like the 90s? Yeah, what are you, the mafia? I don't yeah, know. Like, what, where's that money going? If what are you doing? If lodge guy was serious, he would never want to develop that land. <laughs> that is another reason. This guy is a phony baloney. That's yep. true. Yep. Charlatan. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, uh, 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 Hopkins goes under. They all go in the water to save him. And now we're all freezing and they make uh, fire with a uh, what do you call it there? A flare. Right. I, I've gone camping with my wife now like once a year for like the last 10 years, at least 10. That's how you time. make all flyers now? No, I, I, I can't make fire for shit. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, like, sure. I would die. Uh, even when, like, last time we, went, we were in Hawaii, we did the like, camping in Hawaii, which is gorgeous, amazing. Sounds great. Uh, we usually get like Dora Flame logs to make fire. Yeah. Which well, not you could we... just rub two parrots together in Hawaii. Right? <laughs> but we couldn't, we couldn't buy it. Did you know it. you can make fire by rubbing two parrots together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's better than ice. <laughs> Yeah, they that, couldn't find enough chemical compounds to light on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, we're on the beach with uh -huh. with firewood, uh, kindling. We've got newspaper. I have a fucking uh, a big lighter with those long dudes. Oh, what was perfect. the problem? It just gasoline. would not happen. It did not happen. The fucking fire was about to light you up. <laughs> I think that's just a sign from nature that you should be dead. It's true. <laughs> you should die. The next week, the next day, we went to the fucking whatever Home Depot, and I got a Dura Flame log. Yeah. It's yeah. got to go. Put that, baby. put that in the bucolic splendor of Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. Throw a, dura, a fucking dura flame in the beach. It is kind of funny how they get. Uh, well, I think it's like Hopkins mainly gets way good at building fire, yes. like too oh, yeah. sweet. Because the first, it's like Baldwin's like, I have eight matches and that's it. Yeah, and he like tries to do it once and it doesn't work, and you're like, these dudes are gonna be totally yeah. fucked. And then like from the next scene through the rest of the movie, he's just making fucking <laughs> fires. Yeah. Why not just make a fire, make it big. Keep feeding it. You got the whole goddamn. They Alaska. went to sleep. They fell asleep. Eric, remember? <laughs> they, they fell asleep, and because the, the whole thing Take is like shifts. You're three guys. <laughs> they give up on the notion of a signal fire yeah. like immediately. Yeah. Like because they're in the That's wrong place. Shit. That was the whole note thing. Like yes, they're in the right. wrong spot. That does give them reason to move. Because otherwise, yeah, you should stay put, make your big fire, and you know stay there. But Keep now they've in. got a reason that they've got to move because no one knows where they are. It would be hilarious if like the whole time Al Bond's like well, there. We keep three matches for the mozzicellos I have. <laughs> yeah. I, I have three mozzicellos left and I'd really like to smoke them before any of this goes. Because we just three and it's, I'll be fine. It relaxes me, okay? It relaxes me. It's really what I need. He does a good job shivering. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. Opening shivering the, acting really good sure. shivering. Yep, totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a weird sequence here and I think it's like Mammoth wants this exchange to be hilarious and... It's not, and also I think well, like, it's supposed to be funny. Someone we're doing a gay voice. No, so, uh, we're mm. doing a race thing. Right oh, right. Here oh, good. It, this is an exchange where the, like we're talking about like we got to go fishing or whatever, yes. and he says to Harold Perrineau, like I need you to make me a spear. Oh, right. And Harold Perrineau gets very like, you, you know, he puffs his chest out like, what you're asking me to make a spear? Like, do you understand yeah. how fucked up that is? And he's like, yes, make a spear. Do as I say. And like that's the end of it. And you're just like. But that's such a loaded fucking thing. Yes. And the like the movie or like the writing for the movie knows that it's a loaded thing, but the movie doesn't play it as a loaded no. thing. It plays it as like a <laughs> I think that's the mammoth. That's mammoth's politics in a in kind of a, a crystal ball right there. Yeah, why can't you be laughing at that? And, well, that, not even like that too. I think he's definitely one of those like you can't be funny anymore types. I think that's definitely part of his oh. whole thing now. Well, the dude was never fucking funny in the first place, but yeah, I can't be funny no well, more. Well, the, All right. I, the idea that like uh, um yeah, like stuff like that is fucked up, but it's more, <gasps> but our survival <laughs> is more important. Yes. Our 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 bonds as masculine men is more important than all this race nonsense. Well, sure. it's yeah, it's fishing, try to catch a fish with the spear. Instead, he just cuts his own leg off. I'm unclear how this what? occurs. I, I, dude, yeah. this is the biggest bungle in Hollywood <laughs> history. How did you do this to it's, yourself? He goes, he's like, hey, uh, make a spear. That happens. He goes to Alec Baldwin. He's like, oh, I see what you're doing. You're you're trying to. Just get, keep his mind off uh, the the tragedy yeah. we're in, kind of things. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the idea. And like, 
All of sure, if you like, say so, yes. Like, oh, no. And they run over to him and he says, like, what did I do? Like, How did I, I do this? Yeah. It's like, what? I don't know what you did. You almost cut your own leg off doing With what? A pocket knife. Dude, it is, it is such a deep cut for this little pocket knife. I don't understand his, it. His pants are shattered. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't, I, the only thing I could think of was maybe he was bracing the stick mm. on his leg sure, yeah. and shaving downward with the knife <laughs> sure. and somehow fucked that up and it just went straight into his thigh and instead. Yes. And the second I, it hits flesh, he kept going. He kept going, yeah. And it's just like, no, my pants aren't torn enough. I can get in there more. I just, oh, I mean, I could get. This dude, it looks like a werewolf got it. Yeah, it yeah. is really They try to gloss wound. over it as, as quickly as possible because they know they're like, okay, there's no way to justify this. So we've <laughs> yeah. just got to like deal with the tra- oh no what's make it better they're not like how did you do this like <laughs> your, your version makes sense at least like I, in my head I'm just like he found like a secret block of Cabot and he was just <laughs> didn't have a board to put it on <laughs> and just was putting it on his leg and like I gotta have it Ooh, and just what? slice open I don't, maybe he has, he the has, sharpest cheddar. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I won't let anyone know that about, about my white cheddar that I brought on this trip. Hoard <laughs> it for myself, dude. That's that's survival shit. Dude. It's, would, it's Vermont's best. It's only for me. No, you guys don't travel with cheese. I have cheese on me right now. Oh, you really? got pocket cheese on? Oh, you? Of course. No, I got I, pocket cheese on me. Wow, no wonder it smells. Just in case this plane goes down, dude. It's just some Fumunda cheese. <laughs> is, is it Cabot or uh, Baby Bell? What are you doing now? Uh, Vermont, dude. Oh, of course. nice. Uh, you they, are a monster. <laughs> I love it. God damn this. Uh, this is, yeah, I think somewhere around here is now where like Hopkins posits like we just have to walk south. That's yes. where yeah. we were supposed to be going. So we hit yeah. south and, you but, know, we but, be- but they, they, so with the, the leg cut, he goes to Alec Baldwin specifically. Alec, uh, Anthony Hopkins has been, been right this entire movie. He's like, now bury this, which even like, I'm not a I'm not a bear expert, but I have a good idea why you would bury a bloody fucking rag yeah. sure. in uh, the woods. Yeah, and he, absolutely. And he does it because they're like, they are like sitting around a big fire, like relaxing, like, oh, it's gonna be fine, even though like Harold Perrinot is like, oh, it's not looking too good. Baldwin's got a weird line here where he's like, Oh yes, uh, I don't know much about this wilderness. It's uh not really the same thing as sniffing coke off a model's hip. Yeah. <laughs> or what and I'm like, all right, so I guess. That counts as characterization in this movie. That's the kind of dude you are, absolutely. I guess so. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But, like, the way he... I'm a big city so-and-so, you see. The only thing that makes sense to me of how... What happens with this shirt is that he is actually trying to get the bear to kill them for him. Yes. <laughs> like, that is the only thing I can but consider. burying it would not have been good either. Probably You not. want to take that into the water and put some rocks under it so it stays under the water. Bears have an insanely good sense of smell. They make a bloodhound sense of smell look like shit. Huh. Um, yes. Oh, well, it appears Anthony Hopkins didn't know everything. <laughs> that's what a trivia, fucking though. idiot. So you- I will be the pedantic one on this <laughs> goddamn podcast. Well, here's He's the thing. I think that he, Alec Baldwin had it. Had a deal with the bear. Like, listen, you you kill him. You listen, give me three. I'll give you three million for killing my my friend here. <laughs> All right, one million fish. Okay, <laughs> crisscross. You kill my guy. I I I kill I kill thirty birds. <laughs> deal. <laughs> or it's like you know, like Bart the bear is like, yeah, totally. We can do a crisscross. I'll kill your guys here. But the guy I need you to kill is a bear in a Russian circus. And you're going to need to get on an airplane. Scoot's a real nasty fucker. They just feed him fucking raw beef and vodka. I mean, I would love if that if the bear assassination was successful <laughs> and he took out Harold Perrineau and Anthony Hopkins. And then 10 years from now, he, uh, Alec Baldwin's down in New Orleans and like the bear comes in like Gandolfini. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. Hey, bear. Another shot, please. <laughs> and who am I killing? Children? <laughs> uh, but so the bear comes sure and it does. really demolishes poor Harold Perrin now. It is brutal. Dude, and I thought I had had my fill of this dude screaming on Lost. Yeah, no. no, sir, I forgot how much he's screaming in this movie. We got a, we got a uh, puppet for a second. Yes, oh, but yes. honestly, it's a quick way to go. It might be a not too uh, how It's better than spending four more days with Alec <laughs> Chris, Baldwin. I watched the movie. Of course. He's taken care of pretty quick. I know he <laughs> took care of his leg first. He helped start the when, process. When he de- definitely when he stops screaming, he's definitely dead. I'm yes. sure of that, of course. He's not feeling anything. Well, there's yet. a his his head is being in like swallowed by yes. the bear pretty much. But once you, you know, you get to that point of pain where pain is meaningless. Sure, right. sure. So you're yeah, in, like you're in shock. Full shock. Yeah. yeah. So totally. it's, you know, it's 
What do we but still think, know what's going on. It's like the horror of it all. Dude. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, oh my god, a bear is eating me to death. You yeah, know, what's no. wrong with that? Well, Maybe at least you for you, Steve, it would be like, you know, wow, I've come a long way from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> this is being consumed by this bear in Alaska, not too shabby. Uh, I got out of the borough. <laughs> There's worse ways to die. That's all I'm saying. Oh, sure. I don't know, man. I just I, I could not help but think about our good friend Werner Herzog at this point. You must not watch <laughs> The Edge. <laughs> it is a terrifying film. You hear the screams of Harold Perrineau. <laughs> this son of a bitch, David Mamet, wrote it. You would not believe this motherfucker. He just talks out his ass all the time. Uh, his race politics are abysmal. <laughs> they, uh, so now they're like, and by the way, to your point, the pilot we're not talking about, nope. we're not talking about Steve no more. No, and Steve's it was just insane. Yes. It's not like, oh man, Steve, Steve had a, I knew Steve for 20 years. I can't believe it. I'm so horrified about hearing my best friend die. No, just, I mean, I get like, well, yeah, survival is, is key. But even like, as we're walking copiously, we could be like, yeah, that really sucks for Steve. Yeah, totally. I can still smell his blood in there. Can you? Mm-hmm. There is a really great moment at the tail end of the death scene where like Anthony Hopkins has a torch, you know, lit up and he's oh, been yeah. like swatting or whatever. And like, as the screams kind of dissipate, you just see Hopkins in this one shot. He takes like another, like one last, like meek swing. And then he's like, ah, fuck it. The bear won this one. Yeah. It just like kind of totally like accepts what's I mean, happening. But he's, uh, a, he's a, again, a really nice guy because Baldwin's gone. I would loneliest planet any of you motherfuckers for a bear. I would be uh, God. <laughs> Just running away. Oh, yeah. Just running I, just, away. I would just like to watch you try to pull me in front of you. Yeah, that exactly. would be quite, the, quite, this is quite the image. <laughs> You don't have to be <laughs> the fastest one running away from a bear. You just have to be faster than your friends. Exactly. <laughs> I, have, I have cheese in one pocket and marbles in the other. The marbles are for everyone else to fall as I escape. <laughs> well, I eat my cheese. You are setting home alone traps again. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Uh, but so like, now they're just walking and they're like, well, they, this is when they start to try and hunt. And I mean, like, yes, they rob it, the uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the, the Gilligan's Island. Uh, effects of the the traps that Hopkins makes this this like squirrel trap yes. is like it's like a ninety dollars squirrel trap yeah. you buy at REI. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a West Elm squirrel <laughs> trap. <laughs> it's just like all the, it's like perfectly like grid. I mean, so you say the next time the next time I walk into an REI, yes. I go up to the attendant. The attendant is going to say, "How can I help you?" And I could say, "Point me toward your finest squirrel trap, <laughs> yes. please." That's and happening in a little cage. It's a nice looking little box that he puts together with these branches. But what's funny is like it is also placed on a just a tree branch yes. or like a the log, like a basic yeah, tree yeah. or whatever. Where like with when the box falls down, it's not you know, it's wider than the branch. Yes. So the squirrel can just it's just going to jump down. I don't you understand. That would be hilarious if that actually happened. Like, <laughs> comes down and then the fucking the, the squirrel just like jumps off. It's, it's really not- stupid. I think like you needed to place this trap better, but they fail at doing that. And I mean, it doesn't matter because this is when they, I mean, they capture a squirrel, but then the uh, helicopter. helicopter, the first helicopter flies over. And then what happens to the squirrel? Do they go back for the squirrel? Do they just yeah. let him I'm starve asking, in yeah. there? Yeah. I would take, I'd be just- like, I, w- I would, if I, w- I would, if I was on set, I'd be like, no, Anthony Hopkins should shout back Get the squirrel! <laughs> <laughs> We're good tonight. It doesn't yep. take long to break one of their necks if you get a good hold of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, just real quick. Just do it all the time in and the again, backyard. Yeah. And again, it's been like at least two to three days. They have not, I have not seen them eaten. Like, uh, again, we're not, we're not foraging berries or anything like that. Like, well, maybe Stephen. Maybe <laughs> again, yeah. Again, I think Bart had most of Stephen. Oh, actually. yeah, totally. Are there any leftovers? We're, we're going there. back for leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> but this is when, yeah, the helicopter goes. This is when. Baldwin goes into the only time this movie talks about wealth at all. And it's like, the only thing that you care, because like, he turns on Hopkins for a second. Like, the only yeah. thing that, that pisses you off is, is taxes and Jews. Yeah, what, what, what he says yeah. to him about, what puts you off? Jews and taxes. And I was like, yeah. where did that That's come not from? For this That's movie. David yeah. Mamet. That's yes, right I know there. It is. But that David is about 57 out. minutes too late to introduce a character yes. saying that who has not had that kind of uh, but, uh, mindset, but I mean, like, again, like I think that this, I think the the they kind of like, later on, like even Bald is like, I could have made my fortune out here. So there's kind of like there is in a version of this movie where it is about class, right? It's whatever. it's upper class what? versus billionaire class. Well, yeah, it's like <laughs> new money versus old money. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. I can get from it, but like 
I'm like, I don't give a shit about Alec Baldwin whatsoever in this no, movie. He's a, I'm he's, waiting for him to die. Right. He's a villain. He's a full-on villain. I, like, and Anthony Hopkins walks on water because he's a billionaire. That's I don't true. even feel like uh, hatred to him, though. Like, the villainy thing doesn't That's even true. work to me. I don't really care. Like, I'm just like, well, this is well, just you're, happening. You're watching two assholes survive the wilderness. Sure. And yeah, the yeah. Will, it's compelling in Great a way. title. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than Bookworm, at least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but so, like, they, you know, this is when, this is actually the part where it's like, you know how to get fire from ice? Did you know I get fire from ice? Ugh. Listen to me, Bob, 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 Bob. <laughs> Listen to me. Fire from ice. Bob, 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 Bob. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rob, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, then, then we next- still have the matches, and that's all we'll need. And he just sort of walks off, and yeah. I was like, I don't know. You could use a fish pole, a fucking gun of some kind, maybe. Bob. There's plenty of things you can you could. You could need more Bob, maybe. A Bob, could you get a Bob? Uh, Bob, did you know you could turn a matchstick into a meatball? <laughs> oh, delicious. It's easy. Ooh. We're going to eat good tonight. <laughs> Just like a senile MacGyver. <laughs> That's all he does. He's yeah. a stupid fucking back all the time. I mean, he does one right here where it's like, now it's time to go fishing. And he like fashions a lure out of like the pocket watch. Yeah. And, the gold uh, line is something like it's gold. It's what everyone. The whole world craves it. Yeah. Yeah. Even, <laughs> even the fish in this lake crave gold. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I would like a, a, a toasty like thing of gold member like go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and then he's got like a little part of his like sweaters breaking off, yeah. and he gets that to make the line and. We're trying to fish for a little he's bit. He's about to he's about to succeed because he's a fucking genius, but then the bear comes and this is another this is what Anthony Hopkins does outrun a bear. Yeah, yes. Hell yeah. Absolutely. But where was Alec Baldwin while well, he's I think he's uh, building fishing? A, he's building a, a campfire, another the camp for the night. I'll, oh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll get do the fishing, you build the camp. I will only accept this him beating the bear is when he's done. If his knees are actually smoking, <laughs> <laughs> like there's big like clouds of black smoke coming off of them. His, Cartoon, his, Looney Tunes. His yeah, shoes are totally flat. Yes, the <laughs> ride of tread. That's it. I will not take anything else. I think around here is one of the greatest visibility points uh, because we have some phenomenal like stunt double shots in this oh, movie. Oh, sure. Including right here, like he's doing the fishing and the bear's like, how's it going? And he starts running away. And the stunt double, like Anthony Hopkins' stunt double in this movie looks almost exactly like Tommy Chong. And I can't think of a worse, like, yeah, dupe not, for Anthony Hopkins. It's not a great match. Uh, and then, like, basically, they outrun the bear and they start putting fire. He's think, a man killer. Yes. This is where it's like, oh, yeah. Now uh-huh. the stakes are raised because it chased you again. And it's like, not only is this a bear, this is a bear that loves murdering human beings, you see. Well, that's the, the, uh, the I laughed for about three minutes when they <laughs> earlier on are like, that's a Kodiak bear. Once it eats one person, it just eats all people. Yeah, and I'm just like, right. oh, I wonder if that's coming into play. <laughs> Brent, Brent, bear ruling, what do we think? Oh, God. <laughs> Any, first of all, like man eater is not a thing. Anytime there's like an animal that's killing or eating people, it's usually like they have a their their tooth hurts. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> usually the answer. Oh or man, like, I know when I have a toothache, man, I just want to fucking yeah, you just go on a flesh, homicidal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I can kill tons of people. Mm-hmm. No, I can't afford dentist. dental insurance. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? I gotta kill people. Sorry, America. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that like anything that's like man eater related is all is all bupkis. Um, and certainly like, oh, when it eats one, and I was like, well, where's the, it ate one person and now there's just the, the uh, vampire. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. To your point, Steve, from earlier, it's like, if you had that cold scream opening yeah. about some hiker being eaten by yeah. the bear, yeah. and then you see it developing that taste is like, oh shit, this is actually good. You know what's kind of fucked up, dude? Great point. And, uh, when your movie's missing that, but the movie Cocaine Bear has that exactly. <laughs> oh, God. Huge problem. Yeah. Not good. That's true. That's true. Uh, but I, but so they, they have like a ring of fire that they've erected and they realize. <laughs> um, and the, the, this My is bear went into a burning <laughs> ring of fire. I wish we had a fucking shot of this movie. Bear jumping over the fire. It would be for cool. Oh, yes. Fuck, this, that'd be great. This is the scene that be, this whole sequence into the next makes the least sense of everything. So they're in this circle of fire. Mm-hmm. They've yep. thrown all these torches everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, the bear is like circling them. Yes. And I think it's, I think it's Anthony Hopkins is like, he's circling us. And he's going to wait us out until we starve to death. <laughs> Or be, until we try to get out and he's going to eat us. 
And then it cuts to the next day when they're fine and out and walking. <laughs> yes. There, yeah. there is some bad <laughs> editing in this movie. Yeah. And that happens a couple of times, Chris. I mean, I think that is kind of the most Egregious. What are we doing? Yeah, it's, but it's like you're like this. These you are going to die. And actually, ah, no, actually, there's a couple of times where it's like, how are we going to get through this? Well, then the sun came up, and <laughs> I guess nobody gave a shit, and they got through. Well, it. The bear is a vampire. Really attract, attract the, the bear well, is a vampire. <laughs> dude. Well, no, they probably cut the whole the the, the, the big monologue that uh, Anthony Hopkins. Uh, had that David Mamet wrote where he like talks about his history in the Mossad or something. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to die immediately. You want to chase these guys away. <laughs> <laughs> but the, but this is when the movie gets so wacky. It's like, we, we have to look, you know, Bob is freaking out because he's an idiot. And Charles is like, no, I'm a genius. We're going to get through this. I'm going to kill the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah say, now say it yeah. with me. You're going to kill the bear. <laughs> You're going to be okay. <laughs> the fucking song. Uh, You're going to be okay. You're going to kill the, the bear. Fucker. And I don't know if it's like uh, wilderness madness or if the movie wants us to believe it's like, the bear, it's reading our thoughts. And I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> hold on. Us the whole time. Yes. That's a bit much. Anthony that wasn't Hopkins. the bear. That was an astral projection of the bear. <laughs> you know who that was? That was Grace Starling. She's in a bear suit. <laughs> She's coming for me finally. <laughs> and he this, does, there is the great like, we're going to kill him. And it fades to black. Yes. And I am generally not a fan of the artificial commercial, commercial break sure. in a movie. Uh, this like kind of cuts like the pace right when it needs to. It's a really yeah. interesting yes. transition that as it started fading out, I was like, this isn't going to work. And then it worked. I was yeah. really surprised. And they started that making predator affected. traps uh, for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. This, this is my, my least favorite movie trope of all time is when we need to get blood for some purpose yeah. mm -hmm. and we cut the palm of our hand oh, yeah. or our thumb or our thumb, and it's yeah. like these are the most important things you have you <laughs> are yeah. really gonna need your hands <laughs> sure. so your weird. palm yeah. your hand so you've you got suggest? blood in your calf you've got <laughs> blood almost every part of your body <laughs> yeah, yeah, has yeah. some yeah. accessible blood in it the ass I don't the the ass, ass, blood right there. There. ass blood is so I, easy it's yeah. so you, you don't know. even have to ask for it sometimes <laughs> right? yeah. are you honest you want some ass blood dude you get fucking four really flaming hot barbacoa tacos I'll give you some fucking ass blood don't worry about no, it no squeeze it squeeze it out that's how you do it <laughs> 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 but I mean, no, you're totally yeah, it's right. Brutal. Yeah. Now, I, look, if I get a paper cut, cut, I'm down for a couple of days. Oh, yeah. Judy, I'm calling into work with paper cuts. <laughs> Sorry to tell you, absolutely, because I can't use my fingers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so I gotta, need you, those. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna draw. He, he like goes so deep on his thumb. Yeah. It's brutal. I mean, you're I totally think right. It's like, god, I hate that because it's the easiest way to photograph it. Yeah. But like, how great would it be in a movie where we're like really relying on like legitimate, you know, even like survival the top techniques of your arm? Yes. Yep. <laughs> Anything. All right, I'm gonna go. You, you, if you want this bear here soon, we're gonna use ass blood. You understand? <laughs> it's a very gonna... kind of blood. Did you know that a Kodiak bear actually loves ass blood more than any kind of blood that's ever been known to man? And actually, if you get enough ass blood, you can get a, a low, a low Wi-Fi signal. Did you know that? <laughs> they love ass blood and Komodo dragons. Yo, you can fashion a bunch of ass blood into a vacuum cleaner if you play your cards right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that guy really is a know-it-all. He deserves to be a billionaire. Get him on Jeopardy. <laughs> he would just rake up. But they, I mean, like, they find so many, like, trees and, like, just firm, like, logs to to fashion all these spears. Oh, yeah, dude. It's pretty great. They do, they do a full-on predator, that big thing. It's a, it's a boulder with a rope. We don't <laughs> see them making this fucking thing. This is thing. insane. The big, yep. the spear. The spiky the, ball, the yeah. spiky ball, dude. Uh, oh boy, yeah. I don't know. Last scene in what, what's that? Uh, the Simpsons where Marge is like substitute teacher. Oh, that's a log that comes. Yeah, down yeah, 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 yeah. But I think they do that in Predator. Doesn't he get him? That he does. He does flying like tree mace. Yeah, it's yeah. just yes. got sharpened spikes coming out of. Well, parts. I do love that they fuck it up, though. Well, yeah. that's. I mean, this is. Uh, the, 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 we're gonna do the whole clinic here. They fucking try to get uh, this bear. They're just like, come on, just wait for it. We're just gonna. Back him up into this fucking yeah. trap, and they wait until he just hits the X. Yes, and they're just like, "Do it, do it now." <laughs> That's the best way. And I'm like, first of all, you didn't put a picnic basket there. <laughs> yeah, problem. First problem, you're right. You're and, totally right. And number two, you have to wait till the midsection gets yeah. there, motherfucker. Come on. Yeah, it's it's. Uh... You get him in the snout. Like what yeah. was that? A nosebleed? Oh, <laughs> it's a Kodiak bear, man. 
But we are fighting this bear, yeah. and it is a huge Oof. standoff. Uh, a lot of spears were A lot of running, held. too. Lot, oh, running, well, you got to run, dude. Running the down whole the hill. scenario is exactly that, um, that scene in Wayne's World when Garth is like... Um, First, we get the bear to chase us. <laughs> and then we outrun the bear. And then we get to a series of booby traps that we have preset. And we <laughs> nail every single one of them yeah. in order. And then we get to the end where we've sharpened our bear spike. We get the bear to rear up exactly where we've put the bear spike. And then we prop up the bear spike. And then he falls on it. And then we live. Oh, bummer, It's almost we- too easy. Oh, bummer, we died. Let's see the ending where we killed the bear. Exactly. (laughs) Scooby-Doo ending, the bear. It was LQ Jones the whole time. He was doing a a real estate deal, dude. You know what, man? That's kind of awesome. And holy shit, if that was the end of this movie. Imagine like co-current cuts to him like feeding bears human flesh. Get a taste for it. Get a taste for it. Go get him. Go get him, Barry. (laughs) Should have done. Still don't want to do that real estate deal, huh? <laughs> I will say, I do think they should play Ballroom Blitz over this fair fight. Oh, yeah. oh the, hell the yes. Stick and fights. <laughs> the old fashioned yeah, version. Get, get it going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You cut back to Ellen McPherson just watching the. Why you want to break my heart? <laughs> Why you want to break my heart? She's, she's got a big boa constrictor around uh, her. Oh, yeah. You better uh, call Frankie Sharp. Sharp Spear <laughs> Records. Oh, you know, that old billionaire was really. Informative. <laughs> Why is uh, Rob Lowe subbing in for me as a photographer here? <laughs> also would have worked. Uh, but yeah, so like all of that actually, what Brad just said actually happens. Yes. It is kind of great. I, I do like, I, I do like watching this bear meet its fucking end though. It's pretty awesome. It's nice. Yeah. I'm mean, just like trying to get on top of Anthony Hopkins, which, yeah. which not even his wife wants to do in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> And then he falls on the on the spear, yeah. which is never erect when his wife is erect. <laughs> well, he had a Cialis spear, dude. Right. Right. Oh shit! And totally. they got the idea from the other side oh, of yeah. the of the cigar box that was yes. the note on the. Oh, oh yeah, 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 he shows yeah. him and does it. Yeah, he does it. This is how it's going to work. It's going to work like this. And I like, may have lost my survival guide at the bottom of that <laughs> lake, but right. thankfully. Uh, that note about that guy being back after hunting was also written on a page from a survival book. Excellent. <laughs> I also love, like, Anthony Hopkins, this bear is just laying on him. And, like, yep. there is, like, a moment of, like, oh, shit, this old man's clearly dead. It's like, oh, what? A, I need a vacation. It's like, no, dude, you're dead. Like, yep. that bear weighs 2,000 pounds and you're an old man. Yeah, there's that moment where you think he might be dead and Alec Bones like, say, yes. <laughs> oh, two assholes with the same spear. <laughs> There is a great, we haven't pointed out a lot, but Alec Baldwin has to do a lot of uh, like yelling in this movie. Yes. And when he is yelling in this movie specifically, that Long Island accent oh, is just flying out of this dude's maw. Well, he's, he's, he's stalking us. Yeah, but there's a great, because it's, it's something, that, well, you mentioned the mind reading thing, and one of the lines is like, it's like he's reading the minds, Charles, which is fucking crazy. But then when he goes, like, we're fighting with this bear or whatever, and Alec Baldwin just goes, hit him in the neck. Charles, <laughs> it's great, and also oh. the, the what 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 one man could do, another can do. Remember that? Guy. Mm-hmm. That's very true. What one man can do, another can do. <laughs> uh, but so they kill the bear, and then they go to Mark Jacobs to make these bear outfits that yeah. are dude, fucking right. insane. Dude, they are awesome. I was like, yeah, we're in the post apocalypse now, <laughs> dude. This is a real fucking scenes deleted situation. <laughs> yeah. Like, where was the scene where it's like we're stitching up some of this hide here? We got to clear it before the maggots get to yeah. it, into the wild style. I want to see, I mean, frankly, you know, and we can bring this back to you, buddy, uh, but... Oh, know, would you like to know how accurate it is? Well, yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah, no because I'm oh, saying... God. There's because, smoke coming out of his ears right now. <laughs> no, listen, because, like, I, I have seen, uh, you know, my father's a hunter, mm-hmm. and so I've seen deer skinned quite a bit in my day. <laughs> um, and I know that there's, like, there's a bit to it. You yeah. can't just like go fucking pull this thing's hide <laughs> off or whatever. So like, it's kind of interesting that like, here we are. No, you know, I mean, the survival shit, sure. But like, there's a difference between like survival skills yeah. and like knowing how to dress an animal. Like, oh, you know, sure. it down and everything. So like, what? I mean, what are we doing? I, I know it's not accurate, but like, <laughs> right. how yeah, fucking yeah. infuriating is this? 
Yeah, it's it's a lot. It would not be uh, <laughs> it would not be something you're just getting done in the afternoon. Because um, they're know, also the eating, they're part. eating meat. Now too, the eating right. part, like no one's no one's expected to know this or need to know this, but bear have uh, trichinosis for the most, like the vast vast majority. And that bear meat man did that look good over the fire? But both of them are getting trichinosis and just <laughs> shitting and puking for the rest of that movie. You need to cook that shit till like one sixty, and uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be if the, if it was a a uh, an accurate film, it would be a very different oh, ending. So <laughs> they could be like <laughs> shitting blood from that, right. attracting more bears. Yeah, it's, it's a totally. vicious cycle. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be actually perfect if they are just like laying in the river, shitting themselves while the helicopter goes out. <laughs> right. oh, please, my God. please. It sees the red. Please the, kill us. <laughs> <laughs> just land on us, please. The river's red, so they take the chopper down. What, what is what? that? Well, one man could do another. Oh my God, I'm going again. I can't believe it. Oh, it's both ends. It's both. And it tasted good going down. I will say also, though, I, I have seen uh, like cooked bear meat. I've had bear before. Quite delicious. I think the consistency of whatever they were showing here actually looked yeah. pretty, pretty looked legit great. To, to bear meat, <laughs> uh, which was kind of uh, oddly accurate looking. Uh, but yeah, now they have these full-on bear outfits. Sure. I mean, and Hopkins makes every uh, of them cute, adorable bear necklaces with a bear tooth. Yeah. It's uh, a weird, like, clock. like he's got one made. <laughs> oh, yeah. Baldwin is like, uh, 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 and where's mine? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you made a tchotchke for me, right? <laughs> like, I don't know, a friendship bracelet. I know. <laughs> uh, and then they pretty quickly come upon this cabin, like almost This is like a Miyazaki cabin that's... I, who you can build a cabin anywhere. It doesn't have to be on top of a boulder. Yeah. Or I, I don't know how anyone built that. No. It's pretty awesome looking. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dope. Well, it looks like uh, like a uh, Sergio Leone like yes, room. Yes, yeah. Like, it, yep. it, 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 like it's the final, do like that's how I was like, oh, this is where the movie's coming up. Yes. Now we're getting to the they hate each other thing because it's like, it looks like something from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. It looks like they're going to go at it. Uh, and they find, uh, they walk right past a deadfall, FYI. Uh -oh. I'm pretty sure there was at least one poster of this movie called Deadfall. And they're like, ah, it's not Probably. that. It's the end. When did that Nick uh, Cage kind of movie come I'd, out? I could be okay with that. I would be in a deadfall too. What movie? Nick Cage's Deadfall is... Oh, yeah. It? That's probably that's a few years before this, right? Uh, so okay. wild. Okay. Think, okay. Yeah. So that's what we know that it is. It, it's there, crazy there, performance. There's a video game. Oh, that's Dead Space. I yeah. think there was a video game, sort of a survival horror kind of thing. I think there's also an Eric Bana movie called Deadfall. Mm. Crikey. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> not so good. But, but, they, yeah. but like, mind the Deadfall, everybody. That's yeah, yeah. a little, little setting up while we go into the cabin. Uh, we find Hooch, very important. Oh, uh, I would love oh that. yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. And we find a gun, which Alec Baldwin takes immediately and starts loading. And it's like, well, that's not great. And Alpo leaves to do something and he's like, oh, why don't you make us a fire? And like, oh, here's... And like, he looks and he has the... I guess he has the receipt from... She gave him the box with the watch. Jesus. She left the receipt well, in, which is, dude, what a big flub, Al McPherson, you idiot. You can't even cheat on your husband, right? Totally. This but, is embarrassing. Well, first of all, it's rude Uncouth. to leave the receipt for any gift anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You don't want to know how much someone spent on no. it. Precisely. That's why you asked for the gift receipt. It doesn't have the fucking number on it. And especially when you're doing a three-way, like, uh, I'm going to get my husband a gift. Uh, I'm, I got to buy my boyfriend a gift to give to my husband. <laughs> That's the and worst then I one. You know what? Give my boyfriend a be, gift as well. The twist, Inscribable. The twist should be that there's a third watch. It's like, <laughs> yeah. and then they both team up like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> All right. What's we'll that? What's that? Phil? <laughs> the fuck is Phil? Charles, do you know a Phil? Charles, my uh, Charles, my husband, you know his watch, the knife, and his lover. <laughs> <laughs> the thief. Yeah, yeah. Two, two, I'd watch that. Two Phil, the man with the best cock I've ever known. Like, oh, what, what the fuck is oh, this? Well, that's, oh, now him. that's just perhaps, the last great insult. Perhaps she meant clock. The best clock <laughs> she ever knew. <laughs> yes, maybe maybe this man Phil fixes grandfather clocks, you see. But yeah, not, only is there, not only is the receipt <laughs> itemized that shows exactly what they what she got it also has each inscription so it's like to charles my loving husband here's a knife and thanks then it's for like the money and then the, uh, the third one is <laughs> dollars to bucks. to bob thanks for all the night oh, oh dude thanks wild all, wet or otherwise woo. thanks for all the thanks, nights. thanks for being an a plus side piece uh -huh. <laughs> and this is so now we know now, right? yeah, now yeah, it's yeah. all it's all confirmed again and I guess it doesn't matter, but like the way that Baldwin is portrayed in this movie, 
He is a city guy who does nothing but city things like yeah, snorting yeah. coke off ladies' asses the hip and whatnot. Bone. Yeah, yeah. Sure. All that stuff. Which is to say, maybe as this like fashion photographer cokehead dude, he's not well versed in loading a rifle. Sure. Like right. this is again just really easy peasy. Like I guess the bullets just go in this hole, right? <laughs> like it's all working fucking fine. Well, and- he used to before he became a fashion photographer. He worked for Guns and Ammo. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He's, he's taking got, pictures of yeah. rifles and whatnot. I used to he knows sh- how to handle. I used to shoot the covers for Soldier of Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now like, only about half of those guys are assassins now. <laughs> As he's drinking, he's like, Oh, you need to be drunk to do it. The deed, hop up, hop up. <laughs> and like so now all the cards on the table is like, So what were you doing with that broad anyway? Which I I love that line. <laughs> um and he's like, We're gonna we're I'm gonna kill you outside. He's gonna old yell at him at this point. What's the matter, Bob? Can't do it sober. The yeah. you know, line he fucking gives to him is pretty great. And it's, <laughs> as he's walking, you know, they're talking. Oh, no, dead fall. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. just falling right into this and pit. You'd leave him there, oh, right? Of course 100%. you would. Yeah. Here's the thing. If you are gunning so hard for this to be like some sort of Hitchcock, like fucking yes. uh, Rod Serling, whatever the shit, he leaves him in the fucking pit. And the way you do it is because he jumps down into the pit and you're like, oh, fuck, it. Yeah. you're going to save him, idiot. He picks that gun up first and you're like, all right, cool. He's just going to take this gun and leave him totally yeah. defenseless for when Bart 2 comes down <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> right. But no, we are fucking helping this guy the whole oh, eat the, shit. Because no. He's a, no way. He's no. a billionaire. He's our social better, Andrew. He would, of course, <laughs> yeah. say, he this movie, anything. this movie would be way more appealing if this guy wasn't a billionaire. I'm yes. sorry, I have no uh, yes. fucking patience well, for this shit. Well, better because, or not, I don't know how Tony's dragging him out of the pit. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. also very but, true. Alec Baldwin, Baldwin, gone, brother. Yeah, it's not yep. Alec Baldwin's a bigger man than him. That's right. Well, yeah, uh, you know, you could do a pulley system out of a couple of pine cones. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, what? Like, I'm sorry. This has to end with Anthony Hopkins taking his bare leftovers, just <laughs> hanging out in the little house, and just every day going in and checking, "How you doing on that? <laughs> oh, dude, oh, how you doing? These leftovers are great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop a little bit of bear meat right near your foot. Let's see if you can get to it. <laughs> he uses, Let's see. he uses that pit as a toilet. Oh, yes. oh yes. dude, yes, just do it all. Yes. On him. Go all in, shit yes. on him, and then like when you're ready to go or whatever. Whatever, like the yeah. chopper comes, you're like, one second, pilot. And you go back and you fill that fucking hole in. Uh, yeah. So yeah. he's just buried with, with himself and your uh, feces. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I found yeah. him that way. Uh, he just he was <laughs> full of <laughs> piss and I, shit I, and bear meat uh, when, when I got here. He dug up the latrine, was trying to eat all my feces. He's <laughs> a uh, real sick ticket. He was voracious. <laughs> uh, wilderness madness had struck him. You know? <laughs> and then he fell down and hurt his leg. He became the bear. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, he was the bear. <laughs> And uh, I don't know who carved shithead into his head, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the penmanship is immaculate <laughs> for a forehead carving. But I don't know. I mean, like, also, like, Alec Baldwin is going to shoot Anthony Hopkins at the end of all of this. A, yes, you could definitely get some money out of this dude. B, like, I guess you're going to just bury him out there and no one will ever find him. But I feel like he would be found. You're, and you're going to go back. And, and so Alec Baldwin's playing. I'm going to shoot this guy. Yep. I'm going to marry his wife. And then yep. she's going to get all the money. You're at least like a three-part special on 2020, at least. There's a long time before the fucking H is not O. Yes, You know what I mean? Like, before everything cools down, this is a long commitment to (laughs) keep up whatever this grift was. You're going to have to keep your story straight for so long. Because again, as we've pointed out, he's a billionaire. America's most precious of people. (laughs) So (laughs) you know the country would just be so disheartened and would want to know what happened to this poor man. Mm -hmm. Fuck this guy, dude. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that, like you just have to imagine it now. Like, if 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 Jeff Bezos got lost in the woods, can you imagine the the joy and jubilation on Twitter? Like, oh, it would yeah, just yes. be like it would be it would be celebration day in Star Wars. Like it would it would literally everybody would be joyous and be like, oh please let him be dead. Please. Oh yes, now I am the most famous rich person, <laughs> pedophile. Excellent. Mm. I wouldn't get lost in the woods. I would have died on the plane there. <laughs> I wish. Um, I'd have enough smarts to die in the plane crash, stupid. <laughs> oh, you want to be eaten by bat, do you? So he uh, he he drags Alec Baldwin up, and, and like I guess he makes a stretcher for him, and he's dragging him around. Well, did oh you know God. that you could fashion a hydraulic lift out of a bundle of sticks? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Do it all. Uh, and Do it like, all. He There's, takes him on the canoe and goes down the river. Yeah, sure. so like basically the, the the end of the movie is like, or the end of this adventure is them on a rock, and like Alec Baldwin is like cursing him out, but then he's like, "I'm sorry, Charles. I can't believe I did that." 
by the way, your wife totally wasn't in on it. Absolutely. And I feel like that's kind of, uh, I'm going to die and I don't want her to be in trouble. But she was definitely in on it. (laughs) I'll tell the devil otherwise, but I'm going to tell this billionaire a different story. The receipt. In the fucking thing tells you she yeah, was hundred yeah, no, percent in, in, in on the murder though, uh, I, the bloodlust yeah, and whatnot. I mean, if you find that, like, if you're trying to, like, because sure she's getting dicked, but she's not saying kill him. Part of me mm. thinks she planted that receipt in there and wanted him to, to know. fight each other, right? Yeah, yeah, like I think she was kind oh, of. Oh, they kill each other and yeah. she gets all the money. Oh, oh yeah. devious <laughs> as fuck. I like that. Man's got it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he like he does apologize, then he quickly dies when the helicopter comes. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, you know, finally g- g- hails it down. And yes, he comes back as king fucking shit to this. This is, it's a, and, and this dude. also feels like, it's like, how long were they missing? A day? Well, yes. Everyone's still there. You know, Captain Wilhoyd is just still hanging around this lodge. I think I counted, like, they got like three sleeps in. Yeah, so we had like three, three nights days. maybe we're going. Yeah, their beards aren't days. that big either. So That's like true. No. That's nothing. Yeah. I could like, do this. And they're playing the score from like Gandhi. Yes. Like him coming back onto this. <laughs> like, Dude. Hello, I am back. The police, the press. The, the, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the amount of press they get into this small Alaskan lodge. We is got insane. everybody. We got time too as well. <laughs> and he sees LQ Jones and he's just like, and this is where I was like, yeah. he's going to offer him the fucking no. money. No, no, no. He just brings up that dumbass rabbit well, with a pipe thing. Because again. it's like, Come on, say it to me. And he's like, why did the rabbit survive? Come on, suck my D. And he's like, because the rabbit is smarter. Fine, you're a fucking billionaire. What else, what more validation do you need? I dude? just wanted to operate a hotel where people could come and enjoy. Oh, forget it. Well, you know, uh, my trophy wife needs a new photographer. So <laughs> could you maybe pick that up? I, I like that picture of uh, Jack Hawk. How'd yeah, you like, I like uh, that? live the rest of your life as a shadow bug? Yeah, come on now. You'd be under my pay. Because doesn't he say, doesn't LQ say that he's the one that took yes, the photo yeah. of the yeah, dude yeah. in the first place? Yeah. Wow, you have quite the eye. Oh, okay. yeah, that'd be something. It's, but in the end, you ever here, make $40 million <laughs> the hard way? Oh, sorry. <laughs> he gives the wife the receipt or yeah. whatever. To yeah. be the like, watch. Fuck you. Yeah, oh, no, the watch. watch. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, Baldwin's watch. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 No, no one goes nights. up to him when they when he lands and he gets off, everyone's just standing there stoically like, yeah, yeah, you come to me. <laughs> After he's yeah. just survived this ordeal. Yeah. She's standing up at the lodge deck yeah. like, come on, old man. Come I would have, you know. At the very yeah. least, how about some medical attention? Yeah, you right. know what I mean? A, a snack? A, like a, a <laughs> granola bar? <laughs> a rush and a hug would be nice, yes. wouldn't it? Mm, like yeah. a real, like the second I'm off the helicopter, a rush and a hug. Adrenaline shot. Just yeah. give it to well, me right yeah. there. You know, that would have happened if Baldwin got off that oh, point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's and true. And the first reporter, the, the first reporter to say something asks her a question. <laughs> no, it doesn't ask him. How does it feel? Come on. Isn't it great to it's have like, well, back? you had time to ask her all kinds of questions. <laughs> totally. Before they recovered the guy. Unless you just showed up, which means you were late to this press conference, which is wholly unprofessional. She's got, she's given yeah. all the answers she's going to give. He should be brought in on a palanquin <laughs> by like some of the media, like Newsweek's top guy has one shoulder. Sure. And fucking the New York Times has another one. Uh, but they say in the last you know, uh, what happened to the other men you were with? They died. Saving my life. <laughs> I Great. did not eat them. <laughs> I know what you're thinking here. I want to put this out of your mind right now. Before anything else, there was no consumption of human flesh. <laughs> there was this bear and I shit myself for about 48 hours. But uh, no, no, no eating of the people. Absolutely not. Oh, wait. Actually, yeah, I thought over. Bye. Bye, everybody. Uh, press conference over. <laughs> Is there enough toilet paper up there? <laughs> oh, but, man. And Roger Ebert called this... Uh, this thank you card to Bart the Bear comes way too early in the credits. Yeah. Because it's like, it's a it's a dramatic ending. Like, they yeah. died saving my life. Quick black, thank you to Bart the Bear for being adorable. And oh, like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but he, is here's the, the thing. he is the pull. He's the, yeah, who's, yeah. he's putting asses in seats. That's it's true. fucked up that it's not at the front. Mm. Yes. I'll just say that. Yeah, sure. He you know a, what? He doesn't he get a, like, Bart the Bear is, oh, doesn't is, he get a title card? Oh, does he? Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I would end where it's like thanks to Bart and right. Doug, Doug or whoever yeah. the, the trainer was. Well, this I mean, is, he should is, get the hammer. Absolutely. Yeah, so I'll, I'll and hammer. Bart the bear as yeah, the bear. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But no, we got an open ending question. This is good for engagement. Comment below <laughs> if he does have that credit or not. 
<laughs> you're watching. Do. If you're watching at home, please let us know. Thank you. Uh, but so then, yeah. That's I mean, the that's the, I mean, that's the movie. It's kind of nice that it sort of ends yeah. right there. Although there is an argument to be made that you end this movie right after we kill that bear. Sure. Because yeah. the rest of that stuff just feels all the shit in the, the hut and whatever, right. the, the lodge or whatever it is. Like, that's great. But at that point, it feels like it's in a completely different movie. You didn't yeah. pace it properly. Or the yeah. helicopter yes. rescue ended yes. when the helicopter scene or yes. something. Yeah. Because yeah. if, it's, if it's about man versus man and like the bear is the sideshow, you need to pace it that way. So much exactly. energy is used on the bear and we forget about our troubles for so long. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what, when anyone thinks about this movie now, I mean, we've made this joke for years on the show. Like, this is a movie where Anthony Hopkins fist fights a bear. Yeah. We've been saying that since 2010. Yeah. Like, in one way or another, that's all anyone remembers yeah. about this movie because it was just sort of, you know, pushed as there's a bear chase in a yeah. movie and that's that's the movie. Yeah. Where is the edge here? That's the fucking question. What what edge? The guitarist? They <laughs> <laughs> I think they go to the edge. They go to the edge. Yeah. Yeah. At least they actually self. fight the bear. Unlike, what was that Liam Neeson movie? The Grey. The Grey. The Grey. That's the, with wolves. They, they right? set up a wolf fight and you never see it. No, yeah. I was. Uh, I, I want to see a wolf fight. Yeah, for sure. Uh, a, a, a huge sold out crowd at a Cobble Hill theater many years ago was quite upset <laughs> yeah. when that movie did not deliver the goods. <laughs> <laughs> you could add a pack of wolves to almost any Liam Neeson movie. Mm. It's going to make it better. Oh, yeah, oh there's, yeah, a sure. in, there's a pack of wolves following me on my train commute in the commute. <laughs> the yeah. wolves are going to be taken. Marlo wants to ask you a question. <laughs> oh, no, there are wolves. <laughs> For, for some reason, because it's Liam Neeson, it seems like natural. Yeah, like I'd yeah, be like, oh yeah, yeah. and these are this is yeah. the wolf part. Yeah, there's yeah. a pack of wolves follows him around at all times, yeah. no matter he's, what the character is. He's got a Doctor Doolittle thing, but it's only for like <laughs> evil animals, like the coyotes. Yeah, quote unquote evil, evil animals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In the mainstream media. Yeah. <laughs> it also the credits. As much as I love this score, it's odd that the credits just have this real like light jazzy thing yeah. going on like it's a fucking Clint Eastwood movie sure. out of nowhere. they're trying to go prestige with yeah. it sure like, it's yeah. I'm gonna take you to the edge <laughs> it's We're gonna going be the edge of your sanity right to the edge I mean I would like cause my answer right like what is the edge the edge is cannibalism and we don't get there <laughs> no, no, yeah. we should have eaten Harold Perrineau with that's Bart, a, maybe yeah. ooh, that's the bonding activity. Yeah, really? it's like, see, we both love eating this guy. We're all, we're all man killers. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter because we're at the edge of the world. That's right. Well, we're yeah. at the edge of this episode. So, uh, Brant, we will start with you as our esteemed guest this week. Of uh, final thoughts and recommendations on the edge, and also talk about your great book. Thank you. Um. Uh. So. I am I am all for the focus being put on the bear versus the man versus man scenario. Mm -hmm. I feel like we get a lot of survival movies yeah. where man versus man is the thing, and I'm fine with that. But yeah, you're getting my butt in a seat to see a bear movie, so I want there to be a, mm -hmm. a heavy bear presence, and especially if it's Bart the Bear. Um, so, you know, also it's like I saw this movie when I was a kid. You know, I loved I loved yeah. this movie as a kid. Anything that is a survival movie mm -hmm. or a creature feature. Those are my movies right. and this is both. So I'm, uh, you know, is it a good movie? No. But uh, <laughs> if you like those things, it's fun. It's really fun. And I do think some of the shots are surprisingly good. That bear strike, I mean, the bird strike scene is, is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They don't linger on the CGI birds for long enough for you to see how shitty they are. Mm -hmm. And then all the practical looks awesome. Yeah. Um, so I really just enjoy it as a movie, especially one that I had a connection to growing up. Um, the, uh, the trainer, um, Bart's trainer, Doug Seuss, he started a foundation called Vital Ground. Hmm. And what they do is they buy up land and connect it to public land and protected land to make larger wildlife corridors Ooh, so nice. that animals can move. In, they have larger uh, freedom of movement uh, through public and private grounds. So uh, that's a pretty sweet foundation that he started. You can also buy a poster of Doug Seuss and Bart the Bear Ooh. on their website. Uh, we're talking. And it's pretty awesome. <laughs> I do have one. <laughs> yes. Um, so... Yeah, Vital Ground, go buy some swag from them. Um, the book, uh, I am psyched about the book. If you do not like hunting, if you are suspect of hunting, 
this book is for you. I specifically wrote it for people who don't want to read it. Um, <laughs> and it's a, it's a new wave marketing technique. Of course. Um, so check it out. It's mostly about wildlife economics, the shotgun conservationist. Um, and you can, if you really don't like the fact that the boys had a hunting advocate on their podcast, <laughs> feel free to email Steve. Yes. <laughs> and, don't, don't give it out. Do not give it out. <laughs> That's a Gmail address. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, you can find my website at immortalanimals.com. Uh, my Instagram is stuff in my apartment. Uh, and... Um, yeah, go buy a book. Get the if you enjoyed the uh, if you enjoyed the sounds of my voice, then get the <laughs> audio book. Oh, yeah. Um, now, if this isn't out when the episode drops, what is the what is the street date of this sucker? When can people? Uh, the book is going to be on shelves April twenty five, oh, so oh, next okay. week. Oh, yeah, All right, great. Um, so it's available yeah. now. Yeah. It oh, is yeah. available now for pre order. <laughs> but if, yeah, when it comes out, yes, absolutely available now. Um, I would love it if you bought a copy. I really don't care if you read it, but please buy a copy <laughs> for the love of God. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve Sadak. Yeah, I, again, I saw this movie in 1997. Uh, Do you I, recall what theater you went to by any the chance? The Bay Plaza Multiplex. So yes. That's where that's where you got to go. Bay Plaza. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, it's, and it's a blast. It's, it's not a good movie. It's an absolute <laughs> great TNT movie. Mm. Uh, it's a hangover movie galore, like a top tier hangover movie. Totally. Because it's so quiet. And I do think like the scenery is nice and all that stuff. Like there's a lot of good uh, photography of, of this stuff. The bear looks beautiful. And like, I think that they give two good performances in a shitty, silly movie. So it's, it's totally good. Yeah. Uh, slight recommend for me. It had been a while since I'd seen it. And I was kind of like misremembering some things. Like I totally remembered Hopkins completely falling off that waterfall for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Uh, so that was a bit disappointing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's two like heavyweight actors, you know, out in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of walking, but there's also a lot of like decent talking if you can get around the mammothness of it all. Yeah. Uh, and fucking Bart the Bear, man, totally ruled. Uh, classic, legendary animal actor. Oh, yeah. Chris Cabin. I mean, I, I would say watch it once. It's an, as light a recommend as it can give because it's, it's just a very awkward and weird film to me. The, the matching of mammoth with this kind of world is just so strange and he needs to me to have this work you need a, a director who's more stylish like this is just not that and like it looks good but it doesn't doesn't have any character of its own from the filmmaking point of view or through the editing or anything like that but of course like everything else i just love anthony hopkins sure so him saying like let's kill the motherfucker that, <laughs> Which that is, is great. kind yeah. of That's worth great. it for me like stuff like that like i think back to what we were talking about bram stoker's dracula where he when he says like your birthright yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> stuff yeah. like that is what I come to the movies for at the time and like he does a lot of it in this. Now, yeah. Can Bart join the Council of Dudes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, please, take a seat. Eric Sisko. Yes, it is a, a strong recommend for me like like many of us here. We I watched this growing up and I still had fun with it. Yeah. Me watching it this morning, just the the nature being bad. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, being good. I've got a I got a fe <laughs> I got a fetish for that. No, it was a. I just had a good time watching it again and stroll down memory lane and two big actors getting at it and of course the biggest actor of all, Bart the Bear. That's right. Dang. That's right. Uh, well, that is going to do it for this episode of We Hate Movies, y'all. If you want more WHM content, of course, head over to patreoncom slash movies where every month. There is a boatload of exclusive shows that drop just on there. Uh, so for the month of May, which is what we're in, which I, you can't even fucking believe it, first of all, mm -hmm. though, it's already May of Here 2023. Uh, what, we got a WLM all about Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, right? uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. Proving to you all once again, we don't just blindly hate all of those movies. <laughs> this is one on the love feed for sure, because it is indeed, if you can even stand it, a good movie. And I'm sure people will be very normal about this episode. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because normalcy always happens when you talk about these movies. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, are, what, what else we got here? Steve, nothing for Animation Damnation? Are Not we yet. recording this too early? We yes, are recording this too early. Uh, we're, we got a new uh, Melrose 210 coming yeah. out. Oh, sure. Things absolutely. are uh, continuous. Uh, lives are continuing to be on fire in Melrose <laughs> Place. Absolutely. You yes. got to call the LAFD for these folks because uh, everyone's life is burning to the ground, which is fantastic. Oh, and, good. And, uh, <laughs> our, our nexus continues. 
more. Right. more we, are, we are dangerously close to the end of TOS. Yes. Yeah, and right. we got to figure out, what and maybe we put this out to all of our patrons out there, like, what is the move? Mm -hmm. Does it just become a show where we're talking about TNG? Mm -hmm. Are we doing another series? Are I mean, we are we ending it? <laughs> well, Let us hear that. what you think. No, ending is a terrible idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? You got to make them want it. Yeah, Eric, oh. Eric is doing the Tinker Bell, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you know this 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 podcast might end permanently very soon. <laughs> Unless the show rolls on next week, Steve. What is the next week's episode? Oh, great question. It is. Uh, we're doing an episode on son-in-law. Oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. Hey buddy. Hey God, buddy. Dude. I'm a country. Boy. Yes. The Weasel is coming to WH. Is this our first Polly Shore movie? No, it's, it's, it's Encino, it's, maybe. Well, Encino, well, that's, yeah. it, it, it that's not a Polly Shore movie. Yeah. It's a movie Polly Shore's in. Yeah, I so wait, wait, it's 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 jury duty and then this, right? <laughs> We're in the army now. In the army yeah, now. In the army now. Oh, but under duty. his rules, that might be an Andy Dick movie. <laughs> Dude, I don't well, I'll, I'll tell you this Bio right Dome. now, motherfucker. There's never been an Andy Dick movie. <laughs> no, it's never. Biodome might. I think it's Bio technically a, a, a poly. If, if you, if, but yeah, it's Baldwin. Steven. I don't. Yeah, but he's a lesser the Baldwin. He's, it's a second. He's the bill. beta. Yeah. Anyway, Son-in-Law. This is a movie I've seen probably 70 to 80 times. I like that. Oh, uh, really massive nice. in, in the house uh, movie. We got uh, the the uh, <laughs> the dean, we should say, of uh, American Hogwarts, Lane Smith. Absolutely. Is, is the the father here uh, in the yes. film. It's it's really and cool. Munch some grind. <laughs> you got a bunch of, that's right, dude. Great. Thank you for remembering the fucking uh, the the sort of running I think gag. It's the in that final movie. line of the it absolutely <laughs> like, is. It, it absolutely is. is. It is. It is. Yep, we are. We're gonna munch on some grindage <laughs> next week. Yes, Thank you. Right. Next week we will be munching on some grindage with Polly Shore in Son in Law. Until then, I've been Andrew Chupin. Steven Sedak, Eric Siska, Chris Gavin, Brant McDuff. Take it easy. <laughs>